oh, somebody's just bumped into the back of me and not in a homosexual way, <laughs> in a sort of physical car way. Oh, my neck's sore. Oh, um, oh, have they have they ran off? Are they John Jones? Is it a hit and run? Get on the phone to G4 Claims, baby. They're going to sort you out. Listen to this. Oh, has a, a, a shitty wee fucking Corsa hit your range, mate? First of all, fuck off. Raging. Se- raging. Second of all, g is going to get you a like-for-like like swap. So their courtesy car is going to be similar model. And not many people can do that, baby. Um, also... Also, Jamie. Yes. If you're out there, man, and you're thinking, "Wow, Riley's gaff is fucking rotten," <laughs> and I've heard that, I have heard that a good few times, mate. Aye. Just in the street, just walking, just people throwing, whispering it in the bus and all that. Mera, mera, shout, mate. Mera, Aye. shout in Aye. my direction. Somebody actually walked behind my house and shouted, "Riley's gaff's rotten." Aye. Do they talk about your actual house, do you think, or <laughs> your podcast? I, oh, I can't about it. I maybe <laughs> I can't about it now. But if you actually start a podcast. You want to come up here, you want to play with the big boys, yeah? Get in touch with G4. G4 are going to kickstart your podcast off. It's as simple as that, Jamie. It's easy done, I know. It is easy done. And back on the claims, guys, it's see if see if somebody has bumped into you. See somebody has wronged you in life, yeah? When you phone up G4 claims, there's no money involved. It's all a free process. Don't worry about it. It's not like they answer the phone and go, I, by the way, 50 quid. It's not like a call out for a fucking spark or something, right? Don't worry about that. Everything's free. So even if, I mean, even if, even if nobody's at you, you could, you <laughs> no, could, you, you, can't could you could lie. You could lie and then maybe get something. No, don't do that. <laughs> but, but if you have a legitimate claim, get in touch with them. And also, if you want to start a podcast, get in touch with Greg. Yeah, he is the podcast manager. Uh, the studio manager. I keep saying podcast manager. He's not the manager of your podcast, which that sounds like. I yeah, remember hearing actually, that in the last yeah. episode. start the podcast and he just goes like me that's how he starts so when's the last time you had sex with yourself and i was like how did you like start on it do you know what do you know the thing that annoys me though right see like lassies all cut about with like pure all these wee toys and all that right uh, and then we're just sitting dry hauling it right I know. so i right. fleshlight i got one did yep. you yeah what what's what, a brief mate what, what, it, the what's the verdict on a fleshlight because that's that, unreal mate I, is but it's it? a bit cold in your first go. How do you warm something like that up? Kettle. Kettle. Kettle, right? Kettle is dangerous, isn't it? Microwave, mate. Then my macaroni the next day is just straight belly. <laughs> Can I, and I, want, I want to ask about the, the fleshlight um, because I've always thought about this fleshlight. There would be a moment where you're like, this is a great idea. This is going to improve the masturbation game greatly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think just as that moment, I'm like putting it on in that, I'd be like, what am I doing? That kind, kind of thing. No, no you don't no, feel like that? No, but here's the thing though, right? That's what I say. <laughs> Holiness is a disease, mate. It doesn't go away. You, I know well for a fact. Is- see when you're using it, like, t- tell me this, right? Everyone knows post nut clarity, right? See when you're on page seven. Page 17, you know what aye. I'm saying when you see oh, page aye, 17? Yeah, it's like, so. why am I watching Interracial Midget Gangbang 7? <laughs> like, aye. why am I watching that? Yeah, then you come, that's you're like, you start, I start receding that, and all that. that. So, that's a brilliant little movie. I'm in a tube that looks like a fucking uh, flashlight. And does it work? Is it? Has it got a flashlight? Aye, aye, well, no. Come, can I, can I, can I, <laughs> so, so, so now you're talking about that sort of post not clarity sort of thing, yeah, yeah. right? What is that like in the flesh? I imagine it would be... Do you feel a bit better about it? Because you've kind of went into something and it's no, you're not just like sitting. Mate, yeah, I'm just so used to it now. Would you go, <laughs> but I keep it as a wee treat. I was going to say, I can, you I, do it? can you do the, the fucking caveman way now? Still? I don't, I, I still like... like the caveman wine, way? Wine a simple pleasure, right? <laughs> but I keep that as like a wee treat. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll be thinking... Oh, do you like candles and all that? I, 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 I get a wee, I get a wee lick. <laughs> a, bit, a, a, bit of, a bit of foreplay? <laughs> so it's mine man i love you mum love you but i today folks we've got richard dixon on if you haven't guessed oh yeah and and obviously not because obviously richard is would you say you're an investor 
Aye. 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 That was so, my Instagram username for a while, but it's kind of shite. I actually changed it. Changed it to the full name. name baited out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're gone. So, <laughs> obviously, you're an investor, and we thought, what better time maybe we could pitch something to you, mate? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So, we forget. We've got. Hold on. Just to get out of because obviously oh, and this is like that thing Moss Bros one pound a day rental <laughs> <laughs> right because Jay, Jamie know what I was thinking about I had up a here. really good idea what is it you're up for mate <laughs> what is it you're up for just a big idea I've got for you mate. <laughs> oh wait no I forgot how to do a tie mate oh, you just just <laughs> are you doing my tie <laughs> mate, I've not done a tie in ages that's not, not how you do a tie I know I know but, but to be honest the, the situation's mad yeah, enough no. anyway so the tie's <laughs> not going to be the so Al right, do you want me to start the pitch so, Richard, what does everybody want in this world? Uh, cash. Right, but would you say we're headed towards a cashless society, maybe at some point in the future? Potentially. Potentially, yeah. but we're not there yet, Richard. We're not there yet, so though. I thought, you know, everybody's out working. Everybody's out trying to earn this money, it's working hard. hard. Physical labour in that. It's hard. Lift labour in that. What, carrying about pools. I thought, why don't, instead of us going out and waiting for people to give us money, why don't we start printing our own? So we have, um, we have printed our own money oh. and we, what we want from you, Richard, is a £2 million investment, investment. for 10% of, of equity um, of the company. And the best thing can is... I have, can I have a look? Yeah, you can look. Don't look at that side, but... Right. Right, and it's just that side. Just this, <laughs> just this. So wait, I'll stick this in the back. <laughs> yeah, right. come on, come on. Who's it? Nobody's it. Why does nobody do it? Because no one's ever thought of this. Print mm -hmm. your own money. Print your own money. That's interesting. Yeah. Do, do you know what's funny about this as well? Mm -hmm. Right. Do you know that by doing this, you're actually committing a crime right now? <laughs> Did you know that? Are we? Aye. Are we committing a crime? I, I mean, thought we could just print I've heard money. you talk about sniffing funny stuff on this before now, so I don't need to <laughs> worry, but... No, but the thing no, is, I, 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 the thing is, um, it's legal because, because my, my mom, I'm sure my mom, no, my mom said it was actually all right. Aye, ah, aye. Ah, my gran said it was all right enough. You slip? Aye. Ah, <laughs> yep, right, yep. Right, and I don't need to pee later either. So what is it? £2 million pound for 10%? Mm -hmm. Aye, and but we are going to no, print but, off. But the best thing is, Richard, the best thing about it is, why don't you get... Because what happened is, um, the reason we need the £2 million, because you might be wondering, why did you not just print out £2 million, mm -hmm. right? The reason is, Jamie's printers actually ran out of ink, right? Ah. So we need more ink for his printer to print the money out. Joseph's so, calculated we need oh. 10 printers working all day printing out money <laughs> for the next two weeks. Richard, we're going to the top, baby. So would you... Us three. Would you just consider taking... Dixon dollars, mm -hmm. ones that I printed out of my printer. Aye. Mm. As long you, you hesitated there. No, because I just don't know about the dollar part. Like, would that work What's here? Because it's pounds rate? we use in it. Um. Dollars? <laughs> 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 So that's I'm annoying. just trying to get a name. Do you know? Do you know? Remember that? Uh, what was it? The Usher dollars. Like Usher went to that strip club in Miami and put all this money with his own face on it. Was oh, giving it to birds. And the next day they were counting up and it was like said Usher dollars on it. That's brilliant, mate. We can make it rain in here, man. Look so, at that. Do you, do you like how I made them slightly bigger than I just got those? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't find any printable. <laughs> <One minute. laughs> do you know what I was thinking? I was like, how did I even do that? I was a hit here. Printed, uh, mate, I would have to align them up for a little. Don't ask me how you'd have to But so when we obviously when we. I'd have probably glued them back. <laughs> <laughs> a glue stick. Glue <laughs> <laughs> stick, mate. A glue uh, stick. So, um, right, we'll, but we'll that talk was a bad about, idea, we'll talk about business. We'll talk about business later. Aye, aye. But I'm, in, I'm interested. Aye. aye There's right, a couple okay. of. Tweaks, <laughs> but um, slight, yeah, just move a couple of things about yeah. here and there. You know fine tune it. The banks do it, mate. The banks do it. I, I thought mean. you were going to pitch me like Riley's gaff coin or something no. there. Oh. Now, now on Binance or something. <laughs> yeah, we could get Coinbase. that sorted. Aye, coin. Because <laughs> I don't know if you've ever noticed that that actually the twenty pound note's got my initials on it, mate. Yeah. Ah. What does that? That's the Queen's name or something, minute? it? Elizabeth Re Regina or something? Aye, Regina Falange, Elizabeth something. You can fold is that. that. Actually, what it is? No, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's Elizabeth Regi Regina George or something. Regina George. Yeah, look at that. You can make, and you oh, can you make. Oh, you've got the line in it, kind of. By the way, Aye. the lines kind of came out in it a wee bit. Aye. Aye, look, 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 look,
No, nah, no, nah, we're, we're good, we're good. I should have ironed them. That's but, just good. Aye, <laughs> that washing machine, aye. <laughs> but we, mate, welcome. Welcome to Riley's Gaff, mate. Thank you, mate. How does it feel to be here? Mate, I feel like, see, everything I've done in my life, mate, I've done so much in my life, bro. And, you know, see, when it just gets to that, <laughs> see, <when you> <laughs> <laughs> fuck's sake. See how just everything I've done to date, the good, the bad and all mm-hmm. that, and you just get that turning point in your life where you go, this is what it was for. Aye. So I've been leading I'm at this point, bro. Right now. A lot of people said that, mate. Yeah. Actually, every guest has said that. Yeah. They said, this is the biggest single moment in my life. Uh-huh. And I said, get a grip of yourself, man. <laughs> um, nah, I'm only joking. But, mate, fucking, so people know you, mate. People, I think people see the car at first. I was saying, I was saying to you, you were actually behind me coming here and mm-hmm. I was looking in the mirror and I was thinking, because oh, we said, you were, you were early, very punctual, mate. I like that. V- extremely punctual. It's just, um, it's just me. It wasn't really. I was like in Tinderbox and I ate a cake. It was kind of shite. And then I was like, the traffic's going to be bad and all uh, that. So, aye. Yeah. So, so just, came, just yeah. by chance. Aye, it was by chance. But but yeah. I seen I seen the and I seen the pink, the pink mark, and I'm sitting and I'm thinking. And I genuinely for a second was like, ah, it'll be somebody else. And then I was like, who the fuck else would be driving that through Wishaw? Aye. Um, <laughs> no many people. But aye, it's, it's not it's not a, a car you see. Do you know what? You don't actually even see the GTS that often. Just the model of car aye, in general. Aye. There's only one other one I know of in Glasgow, and Oliver Burke had one. Oh really? Aye. Played aye. for Celtic. Aye. He had one for a bit, um, a black one. But you hardly see them about, mate. They're not really. I'm surprised you don't car. hear them. It's like. SLK. You see more of in it. The SLK, amazing car. Okay. Yeah. That's a heavy. I was going to say a Miles and Cold Brief, but then that sounds so snidey. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I just mean Prince of Cut Hell. <laughs> Hairdressers, more. Exactly. That's what people I used mean. to say, I had a, my first car was a Polo, and people in my work up here, you're yeah, fucky. Fucking hairdressers, Mate. motor, and I'm like, would you want me to buy me? Where is people it? Where say is that to me then. I, 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 I was on the railway. They were all driving fucking, I think they had like fucking Mate. Royal Mail vans. Mate, they did the stupidest shit to sound macho on Aye. sites and physical jobs. It's like, like anything you day, somebody's gonna be like, that's gay. Right, mate, it doesn't matter what you day, mate. No. Mate, see in my work, they say that hairdresser motor, and I'm like, mate, it's just, it's an Audi, it's sound. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, but it's white. They want to <laughs> so, 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 It's the white. It's yeah. hard and as bad as possible. Yeah. So like, like, even stuff like, I used to cut my pieces in triangles. Oh, that was a... What are you cutting your piece for? Cause I fucking want it, mate. <laughs> just cause you want to make it harder for yourself. I don't even get a tin foil laugh. I just uh-huh. do it. It's like shut you like fucking. Do you know what? Me. I've found myself doing that. See with Joseph like the day he's like, ah, oh, I had that, had that vaccine and oh, I feel heavy no well today. And so like I had it yesterday. And, oh, and I can I feel no well today. But I was like, I've been away at my work doing this and that. Aye. I don't know with him and all. Not I mean I think it's they just kind of pride and like, aye. like aye. see when I I used to work on site right. And we worked in houses a lot of times, so you'd see like asbestos and stuff like that. And my dad would just be like, "Fall out of the way, fall out of the way, you wee puffer!" Just grabbing it from the pieces. Like, fuck, it's Aye. insane. Aye, it's like, just like sugar in your coffee. Aye, it's like it's like macho. He really no care about your health or well being or anything like that or your appearance. Or, I'm not going to doctor. Fuck's sake! Just, I know. No, I hate it's all that so shit. stupid. No dent. It, like just no going to end. Even the pieces hang. It's much better in in. Try, it's a, it's a nicer uh, eat, I think, in see the See if you do it horizontal, I think you're going to me. I had a toasty fish oak bar day that cut it horizontal. Nice. That's, no, no, sorry. The square ones, like, ah. I just don't think that suits a toasty, it needs to be Aye, triangle. Aye, the toasty needs to be triangles. Because uh-huh. the toasty machine almost makes it. Aye. 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 How Aye. it's meant to be. Aye. 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 Nah, I'm not having that. Where was this, mate? Uh, East Co-Bride. What's the name out them? Um... So I don't know, yeah, we woman snack bars. <laughs> let's get her shut down. <laughs> Environmental health. Aye, let's get Scott McCullough to shut her down. <laughs> Scott, if you're listening, I'll PK tomorrow, mate. Just um, charging about every show. Scott, you're the woman that gave him that fucking toasty. <laughs> Imagine how insane that would look, mate. I'm walking about with you as if you're my Wayne, even though you're a bit... Uh, uh, <laughs> you gave him a fucking horizontal toasty? Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I told him no. I'm the podcast. <laughs> don't know why I've done it. Ricky Dickies in the motor, I know. I used to Raven. Wamba, wamba, wamba. Can't go deep, no. <laughs> mate, I'm, so obviously, mate, have you ever been called Ricky Dicky? Is that a common well, name? Do you my, mind me calling you that? No, it doesn't yeah. My my grandpa calls me Tricky Dicky. Oh, right, like right. That. Heavy oh. grandpa thing. Aye, right. Tricky Dicky. But bear in mind, my dad's got the same name as me. My grandpa's got the same name as me. So I've heard. A long Every line of tricky dickies. Because, really? mate, like, see, see, just, na- I don't know, naturally, right, we started saying Ricky Dicky, right, and we put a poll up the other day, and it was like, it was about, like, oh, not a poll, like a, qu- 
a was that a poll? I don't know. It was, it was like a, you could ask answer our question, but it was like we were like, which has been your favourite moment of the podcast so far? And somebody wrote, This is out of all the episodes, this is our favourite moment. When you called a mad guy Ricky Dicky. That's what somebody wrote. That is the that's highlight for them. Out of everything we've done, but that's the highlight. Like, I actually imagine them sitting there like I call my stained fucking <laughs> Rangers or Celtic tap, just lying there just going. Uh, just like you're fried, mate. He's probably forgot every other bit exactly. of the podcast. I, I was like, because I, I didn't even think of that. Like, when I read that, I was like, oh, I like, guy's name's Richard Dixon. <laughs> I mean, do you know what? Like, I get pounded for it, obviously, like in school. Like, would you know your name's Dick Dixon? That I used to take pure offence that I'd be like, ready to swing. It's a good like, name, mate. Yeah. But I just, I like it, mate. Do you, know what, do you know what my mum and dad wanted to, well, what my mum wanted to call me? Bryce. Imagine you'll say, imagine you'll this. You guys were here with fucking Bryce Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> Dixon shit. Mate, you uh, know what I mean? Would you think it's worse? I was going to get called <clears throat> Pierce. Pierce? Mm. You look like Pierce, mate. Oh, fuck. I don't know how to mate, take Pierce that, mate. Pierce is not right. Pierce Brosnan. I was going to say Pierce Brosnan. Do you think I could get away with a Pierce? <laughs> I think everybody would look at me a bit differently if I was called Pierce. I was maybe John Paul. I think all my That's videos. That's my uncle's name. Is that I? Yeah, and my younger cousin. John Paul. John Paul. I, I don't mind that. JP. 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 I'll take that, mate. Aye. I used to get kind of jealous. Like, I used to get jealous of people when we were going to lie in school and that. See, when everybody had nicknames and that, I was just always just Evan. I never really. But now people call me Riley, so that's. Mm. No, is that a nickname? I refuse to. It's not really a nickname. No. It's still your name. It's, it's just the other name. Uh, my, <laughs> my name's so like you couldn't make a nickname out of JB Kelly, could you know? JK. JK. Mm, I, I, I used to be the once I had that in the back of a Selic tap. And I got called JK. JK. I, <laughs> yeah. and, and like, oh, they uh, le, le, mind that Lele Kelly. That was uh, s- sang in my quite a story lot. about like you doing like. They use like graffiti in a wall, so oh. and he wrote his name on it. In I like, see, in school, we were like, I think we get paint pens or something. We were like primary school, so it must have been somebody's older brother or something. And we we're like drawing on a wall, like, and all my pals are writing like CFC or like RFC or whatever. And like, SMFC. Uh, I, so, sorry, yeah. I, I, just, I know you didn't mean that, but that's cool. usually what I go to after uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just like wasn't even thinking and wrote like. Jamie K or Jai Kelly or Jai K or something and like my teacher's Pure like obvious I, so I got like, suspended and they got my man and all that I so all the other boys were a bit more um like creative, a, a creative with our with our uh, graffiti but Jamie just wrote his name so <laughs> that's why he's getting suspended and I was like <laughs> I'm saying, man Wrote his name. Baited. Yeah. Baited. But I mean, I wanted, I want to know some stuff about you. Maybe, I don't know if you've guessed that. Maybe that's why you're on, I, uh, on the podcast. I was, I was thinking it was something along those Imagine lines. we went an hour and a half and didn't ask one I thing. Just that said about his graffiti. You know, at the end. <laughs> Look, it's been great having you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, honestly, but what a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, bro. Um, <laughs> take them with you. Make it off my way. You can take them. Maybe we need to get the prints off of them anyway. But, um, but you always dicks and dolls. I, we need to get those dicks and dolls. But I wanted to ask you, Whereabouts did you grow up? Was it Southside? Side? Shield, South side. I do have a Southside side tattoo. Do you? Yeah. Southside made? No. Yep. So here's the thing everywhere in the world has a Southside, and you don't realise that that's dangerous until you're in like a tram oh. going along the Mexican border in San Diego. Some guy with his face tattoo like slaps your knee and goes, Southside where? <laughs> and you just need to double down. Did that you can't can go. Uh, and start going. I just went, so you say that fucking Glasgow? Yeah. So the guys like, some different language. And then they kind of liked me and started giving it the whole, hey. Oof, that's but mad. There's south sides everywhere. So mm. when you're staying in Airbnbs in the hood, Aye. just wear joggies. <laughs> wear shorts, <laughs> man. Side, see, like, obviously, gone away for that wee bit. See what you were saying there about, like, there's a mad, like, Mexican fucking nutter. Like, yep. try to get cheeky with you. Jink, like, I've always thought, no matter what, where people are fae in the world, like there could be like mad nutters for like mad cartels and all that. But if you're for here, you're just like, what fuck's sake and all that? Like, I think we're naturally, I think, I think we are taught that, I think we've got a reputation around the world as being quite, t- maybe not in Mexicans, not in the world, but I, yeah. maybe like to English people, like, ooh. Mm-hmm. But I think we are just, our, our automatic response to things is to just double down and be just as aggressive as I the other person. Oh, but, but you, we, mo- <laughs> we most I people. I just crack him, don't <laughs> even laugh. I just bingo him, break his nose. I don't let him finish his sentence, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone to his trousers and start shaking it at him, mate. Now. Mac 10. Oh my god. Aye. But, um, so you had, so did you have, like, obviously now you've got yourself a bit of wealth, yeah, Dixon, Dixon Dolls thriving. Yeah, um, but did you, did you, so you didn't, did you didn't come from like a big wealthy family, right, did nah, you? No. This is a funny thing, mate, right? So 
when you like when you start putting yourself out there in any capacity online, right? People have like their own theories. I'm sure there's stuff that I think about hundreds of people that I believe is true because I've been told it or I've heard it so many times. They just isn't it true, right? And you never know until it gets back to you, right? So I've heard some mad stuff about my family that I was like, oh, I didn't even know that about my and dad. So apparently, my dad started fuel smoothies, right? He oh, didn't no start fuel smoothies. Use the code Riley's Gaff at fuel smoothies, right? <laughs> so he didn't start fuel smoothies. Then there was one that we were like gypsies. My dad had a scrap metal empire. We used to go to the scrappies, but as customers, customers to, to sell scrappy. cable, <laughs> you know what I mean? That was just what we'd done, right? There was all these different things that, oh, like Richard's like came for money in some that capacity. Jeff Bezos, just, not. Aye, like just weird stuff, mate, right? And by the way, that doesn't bother me, mm-hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, if it did bother me, it would be stupid of me because when I have wins, I want them to be in a successful family so mm-hmm. their life's easier. Like, uh, why, why, why would you not want that, mm-hmm. right? But um, I, I didn't grow up around money in any capacity, mm-hmm. mate. Like, just, I, I was lucky that, especially where I stayed, the biggest disadvantage loads of people had was single parent households. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had my mum and my dad uh, and they were together and they were really good parents. So that was a big advantage for me. But as far as money goes, it was just... Normal. Nah, aye, it was just, yeah. So your dad, what, was your dad a spark? Yeah, 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 yeah. So aye. my dad's an electrician and when I was kind of deciding between uni or college or whatever I wanted to do when I was at the end of fifth year, it was my dad who managed to get funding off the Scottish government to give me my apprenticeship. So oh, I ended up right. working for my dad. Aye. How long did you work for your dad for? Four, my full apprenticeship. Oh, so you done your yeah, full apprenticeship? Yeah, I completed my apprenticeship and quit. Pretty much right on in the, the day. Right the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I, I just need to go. But I felt kind of bad for because my dad invested all that time and shit into mm-hmm. me. But I get him like, oh, it's not new, so he's not that fucking bothered. Do you know what I mean? It's worked out, it's worked out in the end. So did, did you like that? Did you like that life? Like that mad apprentice sort of life? Like, at that time, you couldn't even imagine the life you've got to know, probably. Nah, like, you nah, couldn't nah, even nah, imagine. Nah. Fathom it's no what, tangible. Aye, it's no intangible for you to imagine. But yeah. back then, were you happy with that at the time? What Dreaming happy it? with the, the money I was making, the life I had? Just the life then. you had, were you like, right, I'm quite happy with this, I'm just going to go and be a full-time electrician and have a good life, or were you always like, Strive. I want like bigger things than this? So my motivation was different then, right? So I'm openly financially motivated now. People say that's maybe conceited or whatever, right? But that is my biggest motivator, because I don't have Wayne's, I don't have anything to what some pure greater mission mm-hmm. fucking thing, right? So I'm just like, I like those, so I want not it, right? But back then my motivation was different. So sparking was a means and end for me because my whole idea then was I'm actively fighting mm-hmm. and I want to see how far I can go as an athlete, mm-hmm. right? And then when that changed, it was it was made about money. So it wasn't that I was happy being on site. Now being on site's a laugh, right? Mm-hmm. It is funny, but I didn't enjoy my job. Aye. Like it, it wasn't a, a passion thing for me, and apprentice wages are ruthless, mate. Aye. Like Aye. I mean, ruthless. I was on four pound sixty in first year. Do you know what I mean? And if any of you went to Cardon College, right? There's a bank machine on like the third floor, and every you're always paid weekly with your apprentices unless you work for some big gimp company like Lang or Royal, can you have to wear a <laughs> stupid uniform every day, that right? But we'd be going up and mate. Just any time I put my bank card in on a Friday, I'd just be like, and she because my dad worked for me, he could tell me on the Friday, oh, by the way, you're getting paid on next Tuesday, and, <laughs> and I'd just be like, pure three pound in the bank, Aye. right? But the, the money wasn't good enough. The prospect of maybe making a grand a week, is like, that's a pure golden site mm-hmm. number, because if you can make a grand a week, you smashed it, right? Yeah, pure, so yeah. that prospect was kind of like, <laughs> shit, that sounds cool. But I was focused on being able to train and fight, and having that money meant I could travel, it meant I could, like afford to take a little bit of time off to focus on specific areas of my training or whatever it was. It wasn't an exceptional income, but I, w- I didn't wear any designer clays. I didn't wear, I didn't drive deal motors. I didn't have anything like that. So all my overheads were so low. Mm-hmm. Um, so it meant I could kind of invest a little bit more into my passion at the time. My passion happens to be making just money make and just, money. just doing <laughs> my right. business stuff. Right. But my motivation was different then. So no, I didn't like my job. But I was content at that time because it was a stepping stone for where I, at that point, thought I was going, really. Mm. Aye. So see, see on the fighting, like when did, obviously, did you start that quite a young age? So I started 
in martial arts when I was about four. Four, right? right? Who so, got you into that? Did your dad take you? Yes, I was hyperactive. Does mate. he do it as well? No, does no? he? Fuck, no, he's no. just like, I need fucking skin boxing. Does he fucking swing my dad out, right? Is it just but, like, I need rhythm for tours? <laughs> that's what it was. Like, see people talk about, oh, I don't want my wains to like go and date. My mum and dad couldn't get rid of me <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> they people love me and all that, but they were like, Aye. just, they just wanted me. I was in nursery for a very young age and that, and my Aye. parents were young and I was a total accident as well. My mum and dad met in the arches, my dad pumped my mum. And here I am existing. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it I goes. Right? Done that exactly, now. exactly. <laughs> so they still had their lives to live as well, to a degree. Do you know what I mean? So I started martial arts when I was four um, with Taekwondo, mm-hmm. ITF style Taekwondo. Um, so done at the Nan Mackay Hall in Pollock Shields um, with Mr. McLaughlin, Patrick McLaughlin, if you're watching this, legend, mate. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was my first kind of insight into the martial arts world. I liked playing football and stuff like that as well and I, I've always liked playing card games so like Magic the Gathering um, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like that so I loved card games Beyblades Pokemon all that kind of stuff as yeah. well and I kind of but like I played Beyblades like competitively did you, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. did you have one of them mad, do you mean they mad bases the or briefcases oh, mate, they're brilliant yeah, yeah yeah I had one of them mate so, so <laughs> I, I was I was motivated to date all this stuff. I just loved doing everything but I always loved martial arts um, I kind of fell away from it for a little bit in my kind of early teens and stuff. And then after that, that's when I kind of I started doing brown jiu-jitsu, so like grappling, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when I was kind of like, oh, I really like this. Mm-hmm. I was about 16 years old. And um, that, that kind of got the ball rolling for then eventually fighting MMA mm-hmm. and, and all that kind you of need stuff. To, you need to have done BGJ to the MMA, didn't you? So like you're, to. I, well, no, well, you do not you, 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 you don't need to. There's other forms of grappling out there. Mm, so aye. you've got guys that train sambo, you've got judo players, you've got people that do other types of grappling. Mm. But the it's apex the predator of grappling aye. sports is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. If you're talking about competing to a finish, mm-hmm. like I in the street, if you like, if somebody's a freestyle wrestler, you've got to pick you up and drop you in the heat in the concrete and you get very cold. <laughs> but you're talking about in a aye, sport yeah. environment, MMA. it's a pure equaliser, mate. Aye. Like it's it's aye. the best sport in my opinion. Do you so you still like a fan of UFC in that the now? Are you not going to Vegas tomorrow? I'm, f- I'm flying mate, in ten hours. Are you going are you to actually? I'm yeah, I'm going to UFC two seven two. I like seven weeks ago, eight oh, weeks ago. Aye. Yeah. Okay. How was that? Oh, mate, it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, just one of the most... Because I've done your Dubai, isn't that? Your places that are meant to be, like, mind-blowing. Wow. And I can't thought to myself, is that really... Am I going to like that that Aye. much? And then it just swallows you up. Mate, mate I caught you playing poker outside. I was playing poker <laughs> stars on my phone. I play poker stars. Up. That's what it is, mate. I've been playing it for days just to get warmed up for the tables and that. Shit talking people in the chat, calling them gimps and all that. <laughs> gimps. <laughs> it's like, don't even know what that is. Aye, mate, I've not. I remember you saying you got to Vegas and then I, ju- I was just putting it all together because my pal's over there for his dad's um, 60th and he's going to fucking Co- Covington Master. Who, yeah. who do you think for? Oh, Covington, Covington gets that done in one, mate. Aye. Mate, see Covington. Covington and Usman Aye. are like here, Aye, and yeah. the rest of the divisions like here. Aye. Like Covington would be a welterweight Aye. goat contender if he wasn't at the same time as Usman. Yeah, right. He's just so good. See that Covington? Do you think he sounds like a pure posh person? I mean, like what, Covington. No, no, just no, the, name. Oh, the name. Oh, oh the name. <laughs> the name is posh. Aye, I mean. He's 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 mate. Cover. I think I think that the only other one you could throw in that mix near them is like Leon Edwards, maybe. But even at that, I think Covington. Not... The wrestling, the wrestling for Covington, because it's like Usman and. Uh, Covington's wrestling is so superior to anybody else who's in the division. It's like, even if you're a class striker, they're going to take you down at some point. People pure forget the, out, the striking output that Covington puts out mm-hmm. as well. Like, it's not like he's just Aye. trying to like, hit you and wrestle. Like, his striking output is insane. I think, he's, I, I think he's the, the fittest guy in the whole roster. It's insane to watch like, him. The full Aye. roster in Aye. the UFC, I think he's the fittest athlete. Uh, he's barely seeing the fifth round that he's barely breathing heavy nah. and shit and that's going hard and against he's got him. heart as well uh, that broken jaw and all that fight he's I know he's an athlete so mate. you you actually wanted to go into that and date like professionally of course uh, of course because see at the end of the day see if you're and this might just be a pure macho attitude thing right but if you're fighting and you don't think that far ahead you're going to be fighting people who are Mm-hmm. want it more than you ultimately uh, yeah, regardless yeah. of whether you're fighting in a fucking minors club and uh, I'm with a hundred people around you, or whether you're starting to fight on bigger regional shows, mm-hmm. like if you're thinking, "Oh, I'm, this is just my hobby," and you come up against someone who's like, "This is my life. This is like what I'm doing," yeah, you're gonna get leather, mate, and that's why I stopped fighting. That's, that's mm-hmm. probably true, mate. That's like in 
like uh, MMA than it is any other sport. No, I mean, like, you can get away with playing a lot, like, play Aye. football. Because co- it's because you're in a team where it's Aye. like, that is a cage, and you're locked in. It's like, all right, like, fair do you've been Aye. hitting pads and that, but like, who wants it, Mel? Like, you watch that video, any type of athlete's passionate, right? And you watch that video, that Jack Henry, whatever, throwing the bottle and calling the boy a fucking airhead, Aye, whatever, yeah, arguing yeah. the thing, right? Space cadet, no. That doesn't happen in MMA. Aye. You get flatlined. Mm-hmm. Like, you, I don't have the option of going, oh, you're this and you're that, slamming my bottle down. No, if I'm not firing on the day, I'm out cold. Mm-hmm. Like, Aye. it's like, you can get some horrible injuries. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's just... It's, dan- it's, it's just a dangerous thing to be in half-hearted. Of course. Of course. It's not just like football and it's like, oh, we lost Aye. today. It's, I'm, chew you up, I'm at primal thing and all. Like, if... Like when they are fighting, it would be like I'm saying that as if I'm a mad fighter. <laughs> but when, when you're, it's like if you're fucking based on these two days, I get fucking hell. Oh my god! Aye, but, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mad prime one stick because like if you're getting a doing, it's like you need you're fighting back Mate, to the, fucking no. Like a handful of things we've been doing since the start of time, it's been like breathing, eating, shiting, shagging, shagging fighting. fighting. But it's just, you just always there. I mean, that's what I always say to people. Whether you hate fighting or you love it, you watch it. Let's say us three are sitting at the fucking front row of, like, right at the dugout for the Champions League, and two fat idiots start fighting beside us, and Ronaldo's about to take a penalty. Guarantee we start watching the two fat idiots fighting. Aye. Because... Mm-hmm. Everybody's drawn to fighting. Aye. Whether you're watching them to go, oh my god, what the fuck like, are even you doing? Even school and all that, and all, mate. That was like, like, a fucking one up your fascination. Like, full schools there. Do you know what I mean? But I always want like, obviously, it is a mad primal thing. But see when see when people used to like see how it was such a big thing. Like these two people in all year are fighting at lunch up at fucking Spicy Village, everybody, and then like, <laughs> and then, like there's like crowds of like hundreds of fucking kids there, and, and I've, I used to always wonder like, why do we care this much about Aye. like, it's just entertaining, it's just like Aye. a live thing, isn't it? Mate, see your head teacher, he was called Mr. Lyons, and everybody used to, he was called Jerry Lyons, sorry, and everybody used to go, Jerry, Jerry, no, I'm going to find him. What school did you go to? All Saints. All Saints, what school did you go to? Kafkin. Kafkin. Oh, I've Kafkin. got a couple of mate, mates I went to. Callum. Kafkin. Yeah, Callum, and... My my best friend from primary school who I never spoke to was Sam Blance. Aye. He was my best really? mate in primary school. Sam. Aye. And we just never spoke after that. So I miss you, bro. Uh, <laughs> Sam's but, happened, uh, mate. Did you steal your flashlight or aye. something? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I Sam was like my best mate in primary school. How like, did you know? Did he go to your primary? He did, moved to our primary uh, maybe three years ago or something aye. like that. But then how did he go to Cap? He was a good then? football player, by the way. Yeah, it's good. I, used good. To, I was right back, he was left back. It was a beautiful, beautiful partnership. Uh-huh. If you're listening, Sam, <laughs> let's get the band back together, baby. Yeah, we could start a five team. Uh-huh. He's a, he, he, was, he was brand new, mate. I really liked him. He's a very nice, nice guy, mate. Yeah. Very nice guy. Don't know what he does. He could be a smart kid now for all No, he's definitely not, mate. Is he not? Nah, I've seen him like ah, not that long ago. He's good. doing well doing for himself. I don't Callum know what he's doing. Callum, a great combat sports athlete, by the way. Much better level than I've got to in his sport. You know, he's my tie, wasn't he? Mm. He was like UK number one, like on the pound for pound list tonight. Callum was exceptional, yeah. still is. Aye, he's just never going to compete again. So, just a way for Callum, right? No offense, Callum, but hey, come on. <laughs> sorry, bro. The guest is Richard Dixon, yeah. Um, so like, see, when you were fighting in that, were you, was, were you doing that while you were doing your apprenticeship and stuff? Aye, 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 aye so aye. then, see, see, like, obviously, there, were, there must have been a moment in your mind or a kind of brief period of time where you were like, I need to get away from this whole 95 lifestyle and that. Can you remember when they thought started setting in? So I'd had my last fight and I, obviously you, you don't often know your last fight's your last fight. So I'd had my, my last fight, what ended up being my last fight, and I'd lost pretty badly. No badly in the sense that I got a doing, but 10 seconds left in an arm bar, tried to hitchhike and escape, my arm got broken, right? Oh, fuck. And... I screamed because my arm got broke. really scared there when you I said that. Know, oh, fuck. oh my god, oh, right? You but said that he threw that jab at the game. Part, it's just part of it, right? Watch. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just part of it. So that had kind of put me in a downer. And then I, I was just kind of thinking, like, see if you wake up in the morning, you don't want to fight. It's done. Mm-hmm. It's finished, right? And I was waking up in the morning with no motivation to train, no motivation to fight. And I still wake up like that today. Mm-hmm. I don't feel bad for it. It's just uh. my new reality, right? And I was, I was working with my dad and my dad was giving me the whole, do you know you can make a grand a week hanging out? And it's, it's blowing my mind and I'm thinking, my dad's saying, once your apprenticeship's finished, we'll go 50-50. And like, my dad, I love my dad's right. The amazing spark, truly amazing. A terrible businessman, <laughs> right? He just is, that's just what he is, right? And you hear 50% of my dad's company, wow. That was 50% of 
a nothing. Do you get what I mean? Aye. aye. There'll be oh, no wow. An O five 5 Peugeot expert. That's <laughs> quite. Do you get what I mean? Aye. I was like, real value. No, because it was like, we won the, it wasn't a business, we were self-employed. Aye. Do you get what I mean? So I was kind of thinking to myself, like, £1,000 a week sounds nice. And I, and I remember saying to my dad, I remember saying, Dad, see if somebody offered me a grand a week right now for the rest of my life, I'd sign a contract. Like, why not when it held up in court anyway and two of the contract wasn't it offered to me? But thinking about what I do now and thinking back to that, I'm like, fuck, that's quite sad, mate, that mm. that was my expectation. And it's your parents' expectations as well. Oh, right. that's my wee boy, Richard, a thousand pound a week. Trade, because no, no, no. it's no about... It's not about fucking... They, they don't believe in you that. They just want you to be comfortable because then they can go to bed at night and go, Aye, wow, that's fine. Relax. He's covered. Do you get what I mean? So I was starting to have thoughts about it then and I was listening to guys like Grant Cardone yeah. and stuff. I don't know if you've watched any of his stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was watching that stuff all day in sight and you just get pounded, mate. Oh, you think you're better than us? Oh, Richard, you think you're going to be a millionaire? And all this shit. You just get pounded for it, right? And those guys are still on the same size and the same shit, right? Mm -hmm. And Grant... Ended up, he was coming to Glasgow, and I was like, what the fuck? He's never been to Glasgow before, never been since, right? And I was like, I, I need to go to this, right? right? I got the cheapest ticket, 67 quid it was, right? 68 pound or something for two days. Where was it? Is it that was, in a hotel or something? It was in the SEC. Oh, right. Aye, in the event suite, in the, oh, the, right. the Roman right. something, oh, I can't right. mind, right? And I was like, I need to go to this. And that kind of opened my eyes a bit more to opportunities out there. And, I mean, I don't recommend anybody doing what I did in the sense that I, I kind of put all my chips in. So everything that I had going at that moment, um, after I'd kind of went to that event, understood, okay, properly something I want to mm -hmm. do. And I'd kind of came up with my business idea and thought about how I was going to get around the right people and all that. I just quit everything I was doing, mm -hmm. every single thing. No guarantee of income, like no savings really, because at the end of the day I was like, all right, well, I have nothing to know. So what happens if I fail? Uh, it's it's the same thing. Uh, it's the same uh, thing. Uh, I'm st I've, I've still got my trade to fall back on that shit, right? Um, so it was round about that time. That was like, was in seventeen. I was pro I was starting to listen to Grant stuff. Then in eighteen, I went and seen it, and then that was me kind of like, oh, this is what I want my uh, life to be becoming like. like a mere reality than just like, uh, oh, that's that kind of because vision. you see other people do stuff like that. That's the problem. It's that like people don't like. People don't do stuff because the the path hasn't been carved for them. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, oh, I can't be the first guy to go and do that. As I feel the first guy to fucking make a bit of money for properly, like shut Aye. up. Do you know what I mean? But you just think you've the first guy who probably know. No, I mean, so Aye. that's probably that's like exactly. Your, yeah, you're like, when you get into that world, you can see like Aye. there's a path that people have taken. Aye, it was it was it was the exposure that helped, yeah. like exposure to other people and stuff like that, and seeing what they were doing that kind of made me go. You know what? But like, why? Why know me? Just why know me? Like Aye. I could, and I'm one of these people. It's like I'll get something because I got it myself, and if I don't get it, it's also me. Mm -hmm. Like, if if it goes good, it's me. If it goes mm -hmm. shit, it's also me. Aye. So I was like, well, it's fucking like Lilo's Vert says, it's my world. It's all in my <laughs> favor, right? That's I, by the way, I have a Lilo's Vert tattoo. Just that's why I say that, right? I'm not just sitting people writing that lyric sheet. You're right. As Lil Yo, he said once. As Lil Yo, he said once. The, the school of Lil Yo. But um, I was thinking to myself, like, well, this is my life. So why don't I try and do something? With something, it? something you know big, I mean? something bigger uh, than what your surroundings are limiting you and to. And here, by the way, a thousand pound a week is an amazing wage. Aye. Mm -hmm. Like, so anybody out there who's saying, I'm not bashing on that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I was making a couple of hundred quid a week throughout my apprenticeship, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that was about it. And a thousand pound a week can be life-changing money to some people. Aye. And by the way, people's ideas, people's definitions of success and people's ideas of what makes them content are totally different. Like if you make that and you go home and you you have your family, your wains, whatever, and you come home and you lie down in bed at night and you're happy with what you do, you're already beating half the world. Aye. It's just that I feel that I need to go out and do more than that yeah. for me to be content. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? No, but definitely. That's just my it's all, it's the same goal, but just with different kind of ways to get there. Exactly. You know I mean? You're all trying to reach a point of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That to people might be something here. Aye. I get to this point now where I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to be fully satisfied because mm -hmm. there's always another level. Aye. Always got, and that doesn't mean I'm open about going, this is shit, I need to get in my fucking nice motor and mm -hmm. live my nice life and it's pure crap. That's It's not Aye. that. I'm just like, what's the next level? I think it's, it's evolution. I, see, see what you were saying as well about like, I, if I, if, Obviously, that was your thing at the time. You're like, if somebody put a contract in front of me, a grand a week for the rest of my life, I'd sign it. And I think I've learned over the past year or so, the worst thing you can do is ever limit your financial like capabilities. Like, yeah. put because I'm, I'll be walking somewhere, right, and say, 
say like at Malby Walk with my girlfriend somewhere, and we're this lovely street with these big houses, and everyone be like, oh, like my, like, but imagine we end up staying in one of them. And I'm always like, no, it'll be bigger. Like I feel like the worst thing you can do is just say, like, put a limit on yourself, because then that is that's the only thing that is going to ever limit you. You doing it yourself. Mate, one of the things I always say to people is take the word hope out of your vocabulary. Mm-hmm. I hope I get this one day, I hope I get that. Like, you'll get something because you've either done what is required to get it or because you have not. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. Like, and cunts go, but you don't know what I'm going through. Don't, yeah, I don't know what you're going through, but I bet you I can find 10 cunts who've had it 10 times worse and done 10 times better and I can probably do it in 10 minutes. Aye. Do you get what I mean? Aye, like, oh, aye. It's so many people go, you want this house? This is why I think it annoys me, right? And young people are the worst for it and I work with a lot of young people and I'll chin them on it or I'd see if I won the lottery, I'd be able to do this, I would do that and I go, all oh, right, what numbers do you play? I don't play the lottery. Oh, so you're that fucking stupid that you're hoping you're going to win something that you don't mate, even play. Mate, I'm raging. I've never won the lottery and I'm the opera on my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fuming. Can't just think it's like it's not an automatic entry. Aye, just I know what that, national uh, insurance is. Uh, got all that money coming out. I thought it was what tickets. What is this tax? Do you get what I mean? Imagine like, they just, just read it a national insurance number. Don't like Aye, fucking so the Hunger Games. <laughs> I mean? But like people leave so much stuff up to chance. Do you know what I mean? Aye. And I'm just pure no willing to leave my life up to chance. And it's not just about do you know what I mean? In terms of, oh, I want these trainers or I want this, I want that. Like, all that stuff's good, right? But I feel like this podcast pure funny and I'm being a pure miserable uh, giveaway. No, right? no, we want, we want to talk about this. I, like, one of the things I always see, which I hate, and I bet you see it all the time, how many times a month or a year do you see someone's life hanging in the balance of GoFundMe? Aye. Aye. Right? An but operation. That's that. a shame, right? It's not going to be mama. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be my sister. It's not going to be my wins. It's not just for Mate, you. can I just say something, right, which is mad, just as you said that, I got deja vu. I remember you posting a story about five, six years ago saying, and you were basically saying, aye, all right, like, you might think it's, like, a dirty thing to, like, want so much money to want all this wealth, but, like... Fair dues, money doesn't need buy you happiness, but what it does buy you is, say my fucking ma's about to die and she needs an operation, I can pay for that, and mm. that's happiness. I remember mm. you say, I just got deja vu, you uh, said that was weird. It's, it's something I say to people a lot, like, it's stop being so selfish to think that your success is for you. Mm-hmm. It's not for you. Generational. Do you get what I mean? Like, I'm, again, people call this toxic masculinity or whatever, but I'm like, right, I didn't come from a rich family, so how do I make sure a rich family comes for me? Aye. Do you get what I mean? That's always been my idea, pure inspirational quote. Right, I was right? going to say, I think I've seen that. On exactly, quote. probably. <laughs> Richard Dixon underneath. <laughs> uh, but th- that's thing I always say, it's like, it's not just all about me, do you know what I mean? It's like, what can what difference can that money actually make to Aye. other people's lives? Like, I, it's all well and good staying in your mad eco home caravan with your thrifty Jake. It's not, do whatever you want. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's cool. But don't tell me that money doesn't have value uh-huh. because you're not going to be fucking fixing somebody's bike as a skill trade for the neurosurgeon that needs to take the tumour out your dad's head. Aye. It's not going to fucking happen. Do you know what I mean? So, see when push comes to shove and you're somebody that hates money so much and blah, 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 and something like that happens, I bet you wish I had money then. Aye. Do you Definitely. know what I mean? And that's not me saying you need to go out and be a flash cunt and drive a mad motor, whatever. <laughs> but... Money gives you security whether you like it or not. Aye, it's no, just, definitely. It's, it's just the world, it's the world that's like, it's like you, even if you don't want to participate in that, that's the way everything's set up now. So exactly. it's like you need I to, think it's unless like, the world's going to change. I heard, that, I heard a quote about, it's like kind of, it's like the game of power, right? The game of power's always been played and if you're not playing it, you're losing. You've seen that in this podcast aye, before. And it's the same sort of idea. It's like, all right, I mean, you don't want to play this whole money game, all right, but like, good luck, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Good luck living. And, and I know it's harder now for young people to buy their own homes and all all that kind of stuff and I guess because the industry I'm in I'm lucky that I get a world of choice of the stuff I get to buy mm-hmm. right um, but I, I do feel that there's a huge sense of, maybe no wait, like what age are you Jimmy? 24 right, tw- and you're, 25 right so we're I'm 25 right. as well we're all pretty much the same age right and I feel that see when you hit even 21 and under the sense of entitlement is unbelievable mm-hmm. mate like, right. unbelievable and like, I'll get messages of people just not even saying, hey Richard, if you get five minutes to chat, just don't even follow me. Know that you can't have to follow me. But they'll just message me, all right, mate, I was wondering if you could answer. And think that's pure reasonable that I'm going to sit and spend my time. Oh, yeah, and this is how you do that. I'm like, fuck off, you wee dick. Do you know what I mean? Aye. I don't want to even speak to you, right? I've seen people like fucking commenting on your things, like, can you send me a £100 for FIFA points? Mate, do you know, <laughs> I'm like, that's my fault. Honest. That's my fault. Do you know what I've done once, right? Done it. <laughs> so, a wee guy commented on my thing, right? And I went on his account and he was like a legit wee boy, right? right. He's making wee TikTok, just wee daft TikToks, like how TikTok was meant to be aye, used, aye. right? And he commented on a thing saying, like, oh, my, like my mates have got the battle pass. For Fortnite, Fortnite or something, or something like would you get me the battle pass? And I was like, 
I felt so bad, mate, right? Because I was thinking back to me being a wee guy, you, thinking I... like, oh, like stuff like that matters when you're a wee mm -hmm. boy, especially now in the age of technology and all that, rocking up to school. Oh, Evan didn't even get the battle ah, pass. Yeah. Because, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Shit. I did. So I've, <laughs> I've messaged him, right? And I've said, aye, no problem. I said, but I'm no sending you like money because you're like a wee Wayne and then you'd have to ask him on it. So I was like, messaged me on Instagram. I went and got a PlayStation card and just set uh, Xbox card, aye, whatever, sent him the code, right? And they went and done it. And then the next video I uploaded was some random video. Mate, I'm talking <laughs> two, three, four thousand comments asking for stuff right i was with my ex missus at the time and she was just looking at it going i only left but a couple of hundred of them what i exactly <laughs> so just going, what the hell and people are just asking for stuff and it's like part of me is just like right i that's my mistakes i went and done aye. that but it just like just goes to show the attitude so poor aye, mate like the attitude is bad man now you were saying obviously the the mindset of like maybe your parents generation where they're only fully aware of the opportunities that are now available to young people. Like, if you've got a phone, you can fucking do anything you want, uh, right? So, like, they are uh, that mindset. Like, I just want you to have a job and a house and a family and be nice and I don't need to worry about you, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how did your mum and dad react when you were like, I'm not going to be an electrician, I'm going to try and get into, like, investing property and stuff? How did they react to that? Now, the good thing about my mum and dad is, right, whether they thought something was possible, they would always support any of my decisions. So if I walked in the house and said, I'm going to be a ninja astronaut fireman, my mum would be like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Then when I left the room, she'd be like, wow, he's an idiot. But <laughs> the, to my face, they would support anything I'd done, mm -hmm. like anything I'd done, which was a big bonus, mm -hmm. right? But when you're talking about, like, when I went to go and see Grant Cardone, right, and here's a side, side quest, right? My mum was brought up a Mormon. Right? Mm -hmm. She is not a Mormon, but she's terrified of like, scams and that. Because she's like, Mormon's just a mad cult, right? <laughs> Sorry if you're Mormon watching at home, right? But that was my mum's opinion was like, and my mum checks mine and my sister's Facebooks and like searches for people that work at the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. So my mum will mess me, delete that guy, he's a Mormon, not like, Aye. she's right on yeah. it because she's just worried that people get swallowed up into it, right? Because mm -hmm. my mum's mum, my granny Gina, was like a single mum and like, they kind of almost target people like Aye. that, right? Aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I said to my mum, I'm going to see Grant Cardone, loads of people don't know Grant Cardone's a Scientologist, oh, right? right? Oh, is he? I didn't so know my, that. So my mum's Googled this and oh, no. my mum's like, what the fuck? She's like, Richard, do not pay for it. Do not sign up mm, to it. Don't talk to anybody. She's just like, she's like, she's not saying that's nice, like enjoy it but just be so wary care, right so yeah. i'm like yeah whatever right so it's like day two of the event has started and you know when you're in the sec there's that wee restaurant on your left hand side when you first walk mm -hmm. in right mm -hmm. i'm just sitting getting a breakfast or something i'm sitting on my laptop right and my mum phones me and she's in in chinning at the run free fields right basically if your dog's a cunt you can take it to a field <laughs> that it just nail the dogs in I right know and let it off a lead right Aye. so our dog a staffy called gucci straight scheme <laughs> dog right it's just gucci's just running about right but when you're there you can see signature aviation which is like there's no get hangerage for private jets but they leave the jets there mm -hmm. with signature and they look after them right so my mum's phone me it's like half eight in the morning and i'm like hello and she's like is this guy's name again? And I goes, Grant Cardone. She's like, has he got a plane? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> She's like, and what, like, what's the name of his business? I was like, oh, like Cardone Capital or something. She's like, I can see his plane. <laughs> like a Gulfstream G550, Aye. right? And I was like, all oh, right, okay. See the attitude change in this woman was mm. fucking unfathomable. <laughs> oh my god, son, just getting all the knowledge and all that. <laughs> as if I was getting like she was ready to send me at the church I'm all <laughs> right. So that pure, because then it's tangible. Aye. That's what I talk about. See, when you grow up like in a scheme or whatever, even just a normal working class bit, not even a schemey bit, right? Because mm. our bit was schemey, but even just a normal working class bit, right? Like you can he respect the humble millionaire because you don't know what they look like, Aye. right? Because you're looking at the boy, oh. Evan has Prada America Cups and I would love to have Prada trainers and I don't have the money to get them so I aspire to be like Evan because I see he has something Aye. oh I'm still on the PS2 and John got a PS3 mm -hmm. like how good would it be to get a PS3 Aye. like you're looking at people exactly. weigh stuff Aye. because I bet you walk past millionaires every day and never notice Aye. like say like Definitely. my mate Paul right mm -hmm. like Paul is one of the wealthiest guys I know right mm -hmm. he's picking up a Urus on Saturday he's already got a Bentley big amazing house and that right he wears the plainest clothes I've ever walked. You man. walk with him and people look at me and go, oh, look at this guy trying to hang on a bit with the risk. I'm like, no, spin it out. <laughs> it's like that. And it's funny because the other week he bought what he thought was just a normal wee jumper and it was an Arcturix one, oh, right? Yeah. And I went, 
When, when did you start wearing streetwear? And he, he's pure no wearing it now because he thinks it's oh. like people see it's branded yeah. now, and it's just no his hang, right? Aye. And he's got Wayne's now, right? So you, I, I can't even remember the fucking question right on a pure tangent, but you look up to the people that had stuff. So that goes back to my mom seeing the jet. Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, wow. Aye. Like, she maybe, I grant her don't wears Pateks and he wears Richard Millies and he Aye. drives his mom. My mom doesn't understand that stuff. Aye. But when she sees a plane, Aye. she doesn't know how much a plane costs. The same way when I was a wee boy in Pollock Shields, we had flats here, some of the nicest, biggest sushis you've ever seen down the road. Aye. So we would see Rolls Royces and all that. Did I know how much a Rolls Royce costed? No. But I knew, fucking hell, I can't, must have money to have Aye. that. So that changed my mum's attitude slightly. Aye. So when I said to mum and dad, you know, I'm quitting, I'm done, like, I'm going to go and try and go to my own, they were supportive, but they were... Worried. Huh? Aye, they were terrified. Aye. They were terrified because my security income's gone. Now, I live with them at that point, right? Mm-hmm. I live I'm like myself now, right? But I live with them at that point and... So they know I'm always going to be fucking fed, watered Aye. in the house with a bed to sleep in. That's fine. But they were just, they had a degree of hesitation, I could tell. They would never show me that outwardly. Mm. But I know for a fact they're thinking, no, what the fuck is he doing? But wow, what if this doesn't work? Aye. And the thing is, I was prepared in my head for it not to Aye. work. And it was the apprenticeship and that and all. Exactly. And it wasn't like, like it, it wasn't, I didn't even want to finish my apprenticeship, by the way. I've, I'd done my trade test because my dad wanted me to because mm-hmm. if I fucked everything up I would have that to fall back on aye, I'll aye. never be a spark again aye. like I, I, it's not even a viable option for me I'm never going to do it again right but I was prepared to fail in the sense of okay I failed dust myself off what have I learned and that's actually let me go out and do something else again whereas they thought that's just my one chance my one opportunity and if you fuck it up I already you're back in the job do you aye, get what I mean aye. so I, I didn't even I could have went in my parents could have been like Richard get out of the house you know, having some unemployed and I'd have left mm-hmm. and I'd have went and done it because at the end of the day I was like right the only way to really show something to somebody is with results Aye. and, and, and you can do see, it see just the, the way you're saying that like how supportive they were and though everybody's like that now how we were saying like I asked you did you come for money and you're like no but I did come for like a stable supportive house sometimes yeah. that's more beneficial than, the, than just somebody 100%. flinging money at you hello guys and do you want to start a business? Wow, we look at you go, champ. Now, if you want to start that business, you don't know where to go. You don't know where to start. Say you're getting maybe gerbil skin fades or something, right? And you think this could take off. I could really sell, sell these gerbils on for a good bit of money. Because we, and we all know the market price the, for the, a gerbil, as soon as you hit that skin fade on it, doubles so that is a valid business and if you want to get that business up and running there's only one man with the plan scott mcclure baby that's the one mate that is the one and i thought jamie was going to say a lot more than he just did there <laughs> but um aye if you want to get into that business the sh- the shaving sort of gerbil business it's a good into- business mate it's a, it's a very it's a thriving business at the moment so get in touch with your man scott mcclure yeah um all his info is in the description what i will ask you to do as people when you're going through us, message him on Instagram, right? His Instagram's in the description. Message him, just saying two words, Riley's gaff. That's your inquiry, right? And then he'll get back to you through that. So, and if you do get through to the mentorship course, if you end up on it, you're going to get money off it, as always, baby. So, if I can break it down for you, he's got two courses. First one, Jamie. What's the first one? E-mentoring. E-mentoring. Is that it? Um, no really so um, <laughs> it's just mentoring mentorship program it's just mentoring in general just without the E or you can just add the E on it I suppose do whatever you want but he's going to mentor you baby he's going to mentor you and t- get your business off the ground get it up and running get it started and he, his claim what's that is that it will be up and running in 90 days <sighs> and you'll be ready to take sales this is coming from a man who has several successful businesses he knows what he's doing yeah he really knows what he's doing so his second mentorship program also if you're interested in that is if you've already got a business and you want to kind of say it's not gone well and um, maybe you've your clippers are broke for the gerbils you need new clippers whatever hey, man happens mate That's <laughs> hey, brutal, it? it's, it's happened to us already hasn't it so he's going to kind of guide you through your business and uh, and get things moving a, a, a little bit smoother yeah so Get at him, man. All his, all his details are in the description. Um, and remember, if you're going to inquire about anything coming from us, just message him two words, Riley's gaff in the DMs. Easy peasy. Cheers, troops. Cheers. Hi, everyone. 
it's me, Evan, from Riley's Gaff Podcast, with Jamie from also uh, from Riley's Gaff Podcast, and me, we are here today because you can see, right, I'm repping a sort of blue logo here. Jamie's repping the green logo. And what we're trying to do is, obviously, in the city of Glasgow, there's a lot of d- division. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Celtic and Rangers have got to play in um, Australia. Australia. Um, right. Which, hey, it's a touchy subject, yeah. Is it a friendly? Could could it ever be friendly? I don't know. But we are actually trying to make it friendly by, you know, hands across the divide. Look at that. Symbolic. That is actually beautiful. And that's a bit of compassion and love right there, everybody. So we are trying to eliminate sectarianism. And what better way to eliminate sectarianism than buying a Collection 26 hoodie? This, these are new ones. Unreleased, Jamie. Ooh. Unreleased, man. Not out yet. And they are coming at the end of this month. We've not got an exact date. No, no, yeah. Because Collection 26 don't have an exact date yet. But when we know that date, we'll, we'll be telling you, don't worry about it, you won't miss it. And also, when these hoodies come out, and you're thinking, I'm so poor, I can't afford that. Don't worry. We're getting your money off. Honestly, we've got a lot a lot of little broke boys in the audience, and we love you just, just the same as kind of all the sort of wealthier guys. Like us. And we might talk to the, we might kind of mingle and kind of pay more attention to the wealthier fans. And maybe no pay a, te- a lot of attention to the sort of poorer, sort of maybe not as much money or, or material items. Um, but, you know, that's why we're here. We're bridging that gap. We're killing sectarianism. Um, and we're going to get you money off that hoodie. So the code, Riley's Gaff, money off. Easy peasy. When you're going to their checkout, use that code. You're going to get money off, baby. Cheers, Trips. Cheers. Hi, everyone. It's me again from uh, uh, Riley's Gaff. My name's Evan Riley. I'm, I'm Jamie. I'm also on the podcast. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't play me my wire, mate. If you're always trying to flirt me and you've got a fucking girlfriend. It's flirtatious, there, isn't it? It's very a flirtatious thing. So I was down at Miles and Co the other day. Do you know what I was doing? Usually I'm in getting a haircut. We actually had a huge game of Soggy Biscuit the other day, oh. and which is a, a playground classic. Yep. Um, just like dad used to make just like <laughs> just like daddy used to play when we were younger and you know we were down there and we were really going ham with the soggy biscuit and um campbell actually won oh that day yeah yep yep um he got to eat the biscuit <sighs> Jammy <laughs> bastard. I know. Jammy bastard. And it's funny, it was a jammy dodger. <laughs> was it was a jammy dodger, man. And that was a very messy jammy dodger. But if you don't want to give him a soggy biscuit, maybe you want a haircut, get yourself down there, guys. Miles and Co. In the heart of the West End, yeah? Look, you want to feel sophisticated. Maybe you're like, maybe you're a, wee, a scheme boy like me and Jamie, yeah? For the, for the hard streets of, of South Lanarkshire and Glasgow. And you want to feel a bit sophisticated. You want to feel a bit better about yourself. Take a walk through that West End, baby. Go up to that Byers Road. Grab yourself a wee coffee, a wee oat milk latte. Take yourself into Miles and Co. and say, Riley's fucking gaff. Get your hair braided. Get your hair braided. And you, if you if you get your hair braided in Miles and Co., you have a free invite on the show. How about that? And that is a most sophisticated haircut. Braiding? Aye. That's the that's the one chill fly away to move up a class. If you want to, aye, if you want to move up a sort of social class, get your hair braided in Miles and Co., guys. And, you know, the deal is, when when we get a sponsor, yeah, we don't just get the sponsor. We get the money off, yeah? So, Miles and Co, go in, say, Oh, i seen you on that mad podcast, man. I watch it sometime, man. Really, Gav, man. Always watch it and I'm rough. No, I'm brilliant, man. Say something like that. And they're going to go, Oh, my God, ka you're getting money off. Magic. Just like that. All you need to say is some words. And I'm sure you know a few words. And if you don't know any words, man, pfft. Hey, I don't know what to tell you at this point, baby. So, yep, get down there. All the Instagrams, the addresses, everything is in the description if you want more info. Cheers. I've learned that on this podcast with all these people coming in and that. I'm like, it doesn't matter if you've got 900,000 followers or fucking what. You're still just a human being. Like, your knee, that whole thing died for me. Like, Have you have you ever met somebody who's been truly starstruck? Have you ever met somebody who me. went... Holy fuck, like, who's that? I was talking about that this yesterday because I, I, I don't know why I, I don't know who I was talking talking to about it, but I met Noel Gallagher at a Celtic game once, right? Wow. And I was pure into Oasis at the time. Like, it was 2016 when we played Man City. And um, my dad had a mad box, like, with his company that was, like, a like a business kind of 
expense box and that thing. Number seven. No, it was, it was like the Mad Sky box, so oh, it was like the nice, pure. Nice, nice. And um, he got a phone call like a week before it, like if this woman, like, oh, I was wondering if my client could uh, purchase your box for the Celtic vs Man City game, and he was like, no, like I've got people coming, clients not coming, so no. And um, he's like, who is it? Is it like, No Gallagher? And he was like, he can come, can or like <laughs> he can come if he wants, but. Um, but you can't like just take the box off us. And she was like, all right, that's fine. We'll get one, another one. So I was like, got to my dad's ass out with the, the good cunts. No, I mean, I don't sit, I didn't sit in his box the, at the, the time. The peasants, not. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you're and uh, so I was Jamie like, came to him. Him. no, 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 But uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to go up and sit with you this time, mate. And I pure like, whoa, like mad mod clays and all that and like brought <laughs> a mad I mean, I had, I, and then i had like a this sleeve i like be here now or something like an oasis album and i was like getting me sign that and, all, and i was just kind of sitting like that like an hour before the game <laughs> just looking what about downstairs at the bit and then i just seen this kind of like walk through with like mad security room and all that and he's heavy short but he looked like pure like do you know what i mean he didn't he look like, 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 he's like he's a big, big, big presence aye. i went up to him and i was like eh, no, would I be able to? Eat? And he was like, nah, kid, and shook my horn and walked away. And I was purely like, shaking the hat. Aye. Arsehole, mate. I know, mate, I fucking hate the cunt. Mate, that's no, the but thing. I think he's like that all the time. See, man. obviously, like, we're not comparing me or you to no Gallagher's level, right? But see, some people, like, see if they say to me, like, oh, can, like, oh, I, can I get a picture on each one of my pals are fucking mate? And they get a picture, they're like, cheers, mate. Like, thanks for stopping me that. And I'm just like, why would it's I know so? I think, it, I think if, like, on that level, like that mad superstar, I think if, like, one person does it, it's just, like, swarmed. Ah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, Also, no offence, when people talk about no Gallica and Liam Gallica, they don't go, wow, upstanding, real nice guys. No, they go, nice. wanks. Aye. Do you get what I mean? Aye. So, you kind of need to expect it aye. in a way. Do you know what I mean? Course, but it's aye. one of those ones. Aye. But, aye, that was a time that I was actually, like, a bit Probably fucking by, yeah. Uh, what about you? You ever been starstruck? Um, Grant Cardone? A, a couple of times. Meeting Grant was mad. Meeting Wolf of Wall Street was mad. Aye? Yeah. Where did you oh, meet him? I went for dinner you? with him. Did you? No way, yeah, did you yeah, actually? Yeah, aye, aye, in Glasgow. Okay. You look like you could maybe be like his son or something. Oh, really? What was his name again? Jordan? Jordan Belfort. Belfort. You got a bit of the Belfort, mad. didn't you? I met um, Ariana Grande. Did you, aye? Yeah. Mate, I've never smelt a bird like that. <laughs> Stinking. Like, like she's Barking. just so unbelievable. Like, just the smell. Corn beef. Honestly. <laughs> Imagine be you met Ariana Grande and she smelt like corn beef. <laughs> Man, I would, I would jump her first. Smell onion badges or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you have onion badges in your pocket? Uh, yeah. Do, do you want one? <laughs> mate, she could shite an onion badge out of my forehead and I'd just keep it there. For, I'd get it pure, like, what's it called? Epoxy resin. Right? <laughs> where, where, the, where, did, where did this happen? Uh, at the MTV EMAs. Oh, no, I want to hear about Jordan Bell. Ed Sheeran as well. Fuck nice sake. guy. Aye. Sharon Osbourne, she gave me a bit of chat, but I think I could have put her away. Aye. If I tried, I Sharon. She watches uh, the podcast? Aye. Does she? Aye, she's Sharon. Coming on she's been waiting for me, that's what she's, <laughs> she's been waiting for this. Been, after this, I've never watched Aye, this is, this is <laughs> That's it. What, what was it you were going to say? Like, Jordan Bell? We just skipped her at dinner with Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, oh, I paid for it, but. What, what was it, but like. <laughs> well. Uh, what was it, like? So was he, done like a, he done like a sales training in Glasgow. Right. But Cunts didn't realise it was a sales training. We're turning up pish, thinking it was going to be a mad storyteller. <laughs> like, right, right. Right. But I was there for the sales training. With the DVD, what are we saying it now? So, so I went for the sales training, but I paid for. I learned my lesson for the Grant Cardone event buying the cheapest ticket. So with this one, I went, I'm going to buy the dearest ticket, mm -hmm. right? And it's funny how it goes because one of the guys I met there is who I'm going to Vegas with on Wednesday. Oh. And who I went to Vegas with before, he's one of my best mates now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So Like-minded people going to these things. It's funny how, how it goes. Because I remember sitting down with Stephen, right, at this event and going, um, so so what is it you're doing? He's like, oh, just fitness stuff. And like, he's the most humble guy ever. No, to all, your, all his mates, not, he's just Aye. a pure flash bastard, right? Aye. But you'd never get into him. And I just got my A45 at that point. And I'm like, um, also, I, I just got my A45. And I'm like, what's he doing? He went, oh, I used to have a GLA45. And I went, oh, yeah, that's cool. I was like, so, so what does he have now? He's like, oh, I just got my second McLaren. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> just, my cock just went that size right? just tiny I was just like this is shit right but at the same time I was like oh that's that's quite interesting uh, just like find out what he done and all that and I was in my group of friends I was kind of used to be in the the only businessy one or the only one actively trying to make money and all mm. that. So being in that room was kind of cool. And Aye. ever since then, I've always bought the dearest ticket I can get for any event I want to go to because it's about who you're sitting beside it's the same like when I started flying business class right 
um, I was like, oh, I wonder the type of people you meet. And th- one of the first times I was flying business class, um, just Glasgow to London, which isn't a deal. It's like Club Europe. It's not like the big suites, do you Aye. know what I mean? But just the cheap ones. And I was sitting, I was just looking at my phone and somebody was like, I was at the very front row, so there's enough leg room. So I was going past, I was like, oh, sorry, mate. And he sat down, he's like, oh, I've not got a menu there. Can you pass me it? And I was like, oh, it's Jermaine Defoe. Oh. I ended up just chatting to him a little bit and stuff like that, and he was he was brand new, and um, he was with a lassie who was like sitting behind and stuff like that. He was chatting away, right? And I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. But the next time I'm in the BA lounge at mm-hmm. Glasgow, it's like, oh, Biffy Clyro are in, and it's like, mm-hmm. so you're like, oh, you can actually kind of meet people there. And when you Aye. go to Daryl Gyms, who's who are you sitting in the sauna mm-hmm. and all that? It's not like it needs to be notable names Aye. because I didn't go. The only person I knew at the Jordan Belfort dinner was Jordan Belfort. Mm-hmm. Then I meet these other guys who end up mates me. So it's like, oh, you're kind of paying for a seat at the table, literally. Aye, Do you get what mean? I mean? Walk inside it, sort of hang. For sure. Aye. It's so important, mate. Aye. I was going to say the them they <laughs> give Jordan Belfort the old sell me this pen thing. Is that, does he hate that shit? No, it's right here. This is funny, right? So. <laughs> Picture this, right? Now, I've got a mate, Connor Campbell. Um, Connor ended up, like, we were mates and I was mad with it in Spain, right? Me and Antonio. And I messaged Callum McGowan, Connor, and my mate Johnny saying, why don't you use Ockermere to Spain, right? Just mad with it, thinking they're not going to get in. All of them came the next day, <laughs> right? So Connor is somebody I'd hardly spend that much time with. And then in that period of time, we end up pure good mates, right? So... Was mate, I remember because I seen you at the Wolf of Wall Street hanging all that and blah blah blah. And I went, I was saying, Oh, it's funny how cunts were turning up mad with it and this and that. And I, he was like, I know because he works in sales, so he was there for sales training. Hang. And I went, Mate, it was so funny. I was like, Because somebody picked the horn up, obviously went for the question at the end, and they were like, You and he's like, Can you sell me this pen? And I was just like, oh, no. Like, what an absolute <laughs> gimp. That's so embarrassing. And Connor was like, That was me. Yeah. <laughs> I've just sat so I mean so lot of oh, I would tag Gimp not yeah, imagine was, doing that no. he's sitting trying to get a word and you're like guy was a prick like, trying, on I'm just getting worse and worse <laughs> I hope his family die you know exactly. he's just like he's sitting going back he was like that was me bro and I was just oh. like but did he you know, even remember what he, what he replied was he just like huh. uh, he's, like he just obviously he's heard that a million times right. and then somebody said it to him at the dinner and all that as well and I was just like you are an absolute roaster do you know what I mean <laughs> like, did you get to like talk to you, so you obviously you had dinner with him, so you were chatting with him and I, stuff. I, I, but did you get that sort of same thing with Grant as well? Uh, not in Glasgow because Aye. I bought a cheapo ticket. But down in London, maybe a year and a half later, I did. So who who do you think you've learned more of? Uh, wow, insane question. Very hard to answer actually. Um, so my favourite book, minus Lord of the Rings books, right, um, is the Ten X Rule. One of Grant Cardone's books, but I also love The Way of the Wolf. Mm-hmm. It's John Bell's book. I've listened to both of them hundreds of times. I've definitely consumed more of Grant's content, and I honestly call it daft or whatever, but that 67 quid I spent on that event of Grant Cardone's changed the full trajectory of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, everything. Oh, a lot, yeah. Aye. So I wouldn't have went and went for dinner with Wall Street I if I had they done the Grant stuff do you get what I mean Aye. and I'd done the Cardone University and all the daft things he says oh go and do this and it's $99 <laughs> and I was fucking doing it all and all that and it made a difference for me um, so I would say in terms of just impact my life Aye. in general Aye. I was been Grant and then I met Paul through Grant I mean Paul great friends I've learned so much of him and, and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so Aye. so obviously then you were you went to the event with Grant, right? Mm. And then, well, I'll call him Grant, as if I know him too. Grant, oh, Grant, Matt Grant, aye. Big GC. Aye, big <laughs> GC, so you were with GC, yeah. Um, and then, so these sort of wheels are kind of spinning in your head. So what was your first actual move into getting into the, the world that you're in the now? Right, so so I went along to the Grant Cardone event for Grant Cardone. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that the event was being put on by Paul McFadden, right? So you just might know who Paul is, you might not know who Paul is, right? Um, but that's what I was talking about, he's Bentley and all that kind of stuff, right? He's one of my best mates. So Paul's putting the event on and he's obviously speaking himself at it and all that. Now, I loved Grant's content. I knew he was into real estate, property to us, right? Um, but I couldn't connect to him the same way I could have if he was Scottish. I'm like, oh, he's done it here. Because you're always going to go, oh, he's amazing at real estate. Oh, but it's in America. I don't know how to do the deals here and all that kind of stuff. So then I heard Paul speaking at the event and I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. He's figured, I kind of click with him, game. right? Like it's the tangibility. The exactly. <laughs> so then he's stood at the side of the stage and someone else is up speaking. So I'm like, I'm just going to go and chin this cunt now. Mm-hmm. He's went down and what's happening? My name's Richard. And he's like, a pure tattoo in my head and all that. Like, he's just kind of looking at me like, who is this guy, right? But I had to introduce myself in a way that he was never going to forget me. 
right? So then I decided, I started following Paul from there, and it wasn't like we were mates then, I was just following his stuff and consuming his content, and he put out a thing, he was offering out some training and all that kind of stuff, so I was like, I'm going to go and do that, that training with him, because it's going to be like in Scotland, and it was down in London, this one, he'd done them in Glasgow, but I, the reason I went to London was because if I'd done it in Glasgow, I'd have went home on PlayStation. <laughs> London, I didn't leave the hotel for days, mate. Mm -hmm. I was just learning the content, going up to my room at night, learning it, eating in the hotel every night. I wasn't going to do anything. That's just all I'd done because it was just better for me to get away from Glasgow to do aye, it. Aye. And that was my first step, was getting educated. Mm -hmm. And people have different things about courses and this and that, right? Or oh, everybody wants to be self-taught because it sounds cool. Like... Self-taught isn't really that cool. You want a self-taught fucking brain surgeon? <laughs> or do you want a self-taught GP? Or, mm. Do you get what I mean? Like, it is cool to say, oh, I've done all this myself and stuff like that. And I kind of believe that I would have found success anyway. Aye. And I would have worked my way out. It but like having a horn. Exactly. Aye. I was like, if I'm, I'm willing to take this shot at paying for someone else's advice <laughs> for a, a, a roadmap, then that's what I've done. And that was my first kind of step into... Uh, really fixating on properly 100 percent do you think see like talk about like the courses and stuff do you think there's a lot now like you can i see a lot that are, it's kind of muddied it so that you don't know that like, when people say like oh join my course and you'll learn this and that there's like hunters that are just like like i remember one it was one of the dragon's den cunts had a mad it was literally just like snake oil sales you know what i mean like it was pure bad Shit. And it was uh, Peter Jones is the Peter Jones Enterprise Academy, but that's good. I don't know, it's not that, I don't think, but it was one of them that was like you paid fucking a lot of money and it was literally just like you need to be like this and it's shit that you could see on YouTube and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you think there is merit in like actual learning enough like hundred percent? And here's why, right? And I got this comment on TikTok earlier on, because I, I was in property, you know, three years full time doing a, a good few hundred grand in that in that time right maybe even more um and i started obviously offering out the young entrepreneur society and doing my own kind of wee event and mm -hmm. all and stuff like that and i was talking about one of the events today and someone commented on my tiktok don't go to this event because anything he talks about is on the internet for free right mm -hmm. so i know could you find that information across the internet? Yeah. Are you going to find it in one centralised place? No, not really, right? But the thing that's amazing to me is why is that person who went and used those resources then? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, I just, I just don't want to do it. So you don't want to go... Like, my first year in property, I made 105 grand, right? So you don't want 105 grand? You don't want it? No, you're just being a wee fucking gimpy bastard. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Like, I understand for some people education works, for some people it doesn't. Same way some people click with school and some people click with university. And obviously with what I do now, it's, it's slightly different. It's no the same as pure traditional education, right? I'm not really a traditional cunt. But people always say that, oh, all this stuff, you can find it for free. I'm like, that's fine, but why are you not going out and doing it then? And why are you not doing it then? So I can speak for education with a, a great amount of positivity because I know what it done for me. Mm -hmm. The same way you can give two people the same tools. One person will do something amazing with it, one person will do something Aye. do nothing with it. Do you know what I mean? Aye, it's down to the individual and what they want. Mm -hmm. I just knew like okay I'm willing to pay a price mm -hmm. in terms of sweat equity and maybe some money as well to get the information I need to get where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And see, like, now obviously you're talking about, like, these mad courses promising you the world, and mm, then what, what is your opinion on Forex, right? Mm. Because Forex is a thing that I think people genuinely think Forex, like, when you say Forex is somebody who doesn't know about it, they think scam. They, I, think, I think that people genuinely think Forex is, is the scam, but really the scam is the person who's telling you I'm going to get you a Lamborghini in fucking a year's time. Like It's it's, it's the same as the person who sells your granny with Alzheimer's, the double glazing windows. She doesn't need... It's like, Connor Campbell. That's, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's, their, that's their vehicle to an end result, which is their in income, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for example, you guys know I own the best watch, mm -hmm. right? a little financial education product, and it's just something I own. It's not what I put a lot of time into. Now, within that product, there's crypto, there's FX, there's all these different things and it's structured very differently, mm -hmm. right? But it went through, FX went through a period, it's an industry I know very well, mm -hmm. um, that it was just, it was just about affiliates, right? Mm -hmm. CPA it's called, right? And that's what it was all about, was mm -hmm. just getting affiliates as, as big as you could, right? BD Swiss. And and exactly, BD Swiss, Vantage, Axie Trader, all these different Aye. brokers, right? And that was the, that was the main focus of the whole thing. Now, 
at Investwatch, for example, we have Wee Ben, who's going through his exams now to become a funded trader, and he's legitimately very passionate mm-hmm. and good at what he does, because that is his whole life. Mm-hmm. He has no affiliate income, doesn't do any of that stuff. He trades actively. And the thing is, an industry gets to a point where if it's had so much negative input, you can't expect people to believe anything that is Jump anything positive stuff. that's associated with that, right? And it's up to you as an individual to prove the success or how reasonable that product is to use. The same way people can also convince you that some shite is really good. I know loads of people that make exceptional incomes for CFD trading in general, mm-hmm. right? So that's just leveraged trading, right. whether it be leveraged futures trading, whether it be mm-hmm. leveraged crypto trading, whether it be leveraged FX trading, mm-hmm. metals trading, what commodities, like any type of vehicle Aye. will leverage, right? I know people make amazing incomes from it. And then I know people and have been friends with people who I'm no friends with now who have been outed in some of the worst FX scams in the UK. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and thinking, fucking hell, that used to be one of my friends. Like, Aye. I still get people saying stuff like, oh, you were friends with this guy and you used to cut about with this guy yeah. and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I did. I did. That was my friend. The same way, like, my uncle is a, a career armed robber who's in and out of the jail. And any time he's out, I'm like, oh, what's that? What are you up to? You? I go bowling. Like, Aye. and somebody go, you hang about with an armed robber? Like, yeah, I, I, I did. Like, Aye. I do. Sometimes Different my uncle, because I love a guy, right? But, like, when you see that kind of stuff, like, it's it's terrible, but fraud and stuff like that has been a thing that's went it's on everywhere, for isn't it? years, years. Mm. People do it improperly as well. It's people mm. do it improperly. Aye. They just run Ponzi schemes based on investors' money. Oh, I've got this amazing project coming up. I need 50 grand for it. As I spend that 50 grand, they're talking about the next project. Aye. Mm-hmm. It's just, I. So FX as an industry, as we understand it as retail investors, is fucked. Mm-hmm. It's fucked. Do you think you can come back for it? I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. I don't know. They've tarnished it, man. It's like these boys that are cutting about in like full Gucci trackies and like pure, do you want this lifestyle? Do you want to be your own boss? No, that like it's fucking, Aye. and then just saying, all right, you need to sign up through this link mm-hmm. with BD Swiss. And then they're getting the money for you, your initial deposit. Is that Aye, right? Like, CPA, and then, that's what Aye. it is. CPA. And then, and then like you get put in a group, then signals and like, I did this and you're like, right. And then you win some money, then it goes back down. It's a very like volatile hang in it. Of course. Aye. And I think in terms of, will it bounce back? It, it kind of depends. I mean, it's never died. The industry's aye. still aye, like, aye. going. There's still people that do signal services and educational courses and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think over time, people are quick to forget stuff. Aye. So I think, I hope we don't see it like it was three years ago. Aye. People just piling out these affiliates. That would be pretty brutal, to be honest. Aye. It's crazy because, as I was saying, like, you mentioned, like, say I was like, or oh, see if I said to him, like, somebody I know, like, uh, I've just got into, like, Forex, just started it and that, they'd immediately think I was being scammed or, like, what? Like, like I have you just bought Sneak Oil? Like, that sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. even though it is a legitimate <laughs> thing, it's just the way people have been marketing getting into it sort of thing. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? I, it's, that, that's all it is. It's like, you can take any type of product, service, industry, market, and promote it in a way that's Negative. unhealthy. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you can do that with anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just how people choose to drive traffic to that to get their mm-hmm. own end result can be, oh, I, I mean, that that golf that we're selling, I, it's only got 100,000 mile, but they've just took 40,000 mile off it. Like, Aye. that's scammy. Aye. But for a different, and the end result is to sell the car for their own income. Do you know what I mean? I it's get like, what you mean. It's, it's, just just, a- it's just the vehicle they choose to get to that point. Could it be FX? Could it be selling dodgy motors? Could it be Green Deal boiler scams? Could Aye. it be Margaret, you need to move your pension into a safe account? Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? It could be anything. Do you know what I mean? Aye. And see, just I just remember you saying you were talking about something you're like, I'm not very traditional. Like, you know, you know this. Like, if somebody walked by in the street, they would, they probably wouldn't think you were any property and like all this stuff. Oh, of course because not. you don't, you don't give off that in your appearance. Aye, you just of d- dress normally and like. So if you ran into trouble in that industry based off of how you present yourself, aye, I co- like apart from it like, against the norm almost. For like for sure, and the thing is with that, it doesn't bother me at all, right? Because if. A deal breaker for you, regardless how good the opportunity is, right? Because again, it's not about me, it's about what can I provide the person that's of value to them, right? So if your deal breaker for a good opportunity is, oh, he's got a nose ring. I don't like the fact he's got a nose ring. 
then more fool you, you fucking idiot. Do you Aye. know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't like, he's got a tattoo in the back of his head. He's got tattoos in his arms, his legs, or I don't like so how he speaks. Oh, he's wearing a track, he's not wearing a suit. Like, it doesn't bother me because these people are literally dying. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I am marketing to the new generation of entrepreneurs. Yeah. People say to me, Richard, why are you talking about business on TikTok? Now, now my TikTok should be roasting cunts, right? <laughs> but people go, why were you talking about business on TikTok? Like, what was the point in that? I'm like, because guess what? These people get older. Aye. And then become clients or become students or become all these different things. So why Aye. should I know? Give them information. Because I sure as fuck wish I had mm-hmm. access to that kind of stuff when Aye. I was that age. Do you get sort of vibes of like, see these older guys who have got the suits and maybe you walk in a room and they're like, oh, flip. Do you, is there like gatekeeper sort of vibes? Do you think, they're, do you think they're actually intimidated by it more than... Well, of course. Uh, mate, of course they are, mm-hmm. right? Because I carry myself with so much confidence, right? So I can walk into a room with anybody and they might not like it, but I'll be confident as anything. No, in the sense of thinking I'm the best in the room, right? But Aye. I'm like, I can give value to anybody in here in some way, mm-hmm. right? So I'm, I'll am shake your hand and I'll have a joke with you straight away and all that and they don't like that stuff, mm-hmm. right? And do you know how many times I've had this exact sentence play out? I sit and talk to somebody, right? And... Let's say I've been asked to go along to a meeting or someone's like, oh, I'm having a, I own this business, I'm having a coffee, mom, would you like to come along? And it's not something I often do, but the odd time I'll go along. And someone goes that to me, oh, see the car or whatever, maybe I'll be wearing a, a Rolex that day or whatever. And they go, oh, how did you get that? Oh, I run a property business, do blah, 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 blah. Oh, and what is it you do? And I talk about the specifics of what our business does, right? And they'll go, oh, I mean, I've been in property for 30 years now. I've never heard of anything like that, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And here you are. Like, this same coffee morning is the guy who's been doing property full-time for three and a half years, okay. who, no offence, more than likely makes more. Actually, I, I, I definitely make more than <laughs> most of those people every year, right? If you want to take it in a vanity metric. So I'm like, holy fuck, if I am at the David Lloyd Renfrew at a coffee morning in 30 years' time in property, I actually will just kill myself. Aye, that's because like I feel, a sign of failure, like, like, people go, oh, I've been doing this for 15, I've been doing this for 30 years now. I know some joiners who are wood butchers, mate, who have been doing it for 15, 20 years. Mm. And I know some boys straight out of their apprenticeships. I'm like, wow, the finish on that kitchen's exceptional. Aye. Like, just because you've done something for a long time doesn't Aye. mean Aye. I, I've took smack for 20 years. <laughs> oh, that's great, mate. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> amazing, yeah. impressive. You Do you know what I mean? It, people, like, it's people, it's just... People, and that's in every, in, like, workplaces. Like, you go into a workplace, see all the old guys that have been there for 20 odd years, they'll be far more respected than somebody who's started maybe a year, two years. Uh-huh. We, we judge things on time served a lot we respect people that have oh you put the years in congratulations Evan on his 40 years service at a fucking Rolls Royce machine and turbine aye, blades I know. oh yeah congratulations aye, mate. you, you spent be 40 years of your life <laughs> work 50 years at the post office and you get like a mad £100 watch or something as your aye. like retirement gift it's know what I mean just, it's like yeah. it's, it's insane mate that people are willing to and it's a give sh- up their life it's for a that. shame for like the way that people are treated if that is like what, what they have done do you know what I mean mm-hmm. like it's like there's, but I, the, but I think what employers do is like they set it up in a way that's like, oh, I, we just twenty years you've been here, not, but that's no beneficial for you. That's beneficial for the boss that Aye. you're willing to just come in every morning and graft, no safer call, go home. That's beneficial for the boss, but mm-hmm, for you, yeah. but like the male respecting that they treat you with, like, oh, here's a watch, and that you're like, oh, they oh, may get that Domino's in your birthday. Or something. <laughs> Aye, it's horrible the way country treat but it's workers. The way, it's the way humans are programmed. We go back to that primal thing, right? Yeah. Because we would, if millions of years ago, you'd make friends because you'd be sitting, all the high hegens would be around the fire, eating whatever they ate, and then they'd see you and fling your wee thing. Oh, I've got a wee thing. So I'm going to, even though they punch fuck at me and make me go and get their water Aye. and fucking do whatever, they gave me a bit of chicken the day, Aye. so I'm going to sit about with them, right? And so easily led is the fool. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? Aye, no, like, definitely. Oh, and they gave me this thing, they gave me this thing. It's like the, the family guy, oh, it it's getting, be it's getting, Aye. Right, Aye. that's what it's that's like. Really they're just constantly that. going because they're, they're addicted to that and we're marketed on TV. Aye. And now, maybe I fell out of this because like every month before I can even kick a ball, before I can spend a penny on myself, I'm five grand a month, right? That's not my office. That's not my business expenses. That's me. That's two cars. That's a nice house. That's just what I need to pay is about five grand a mm-hmm. month, right, to live. So, but my income far exceeds that. So I'm safe, right? But we're all marketed these new things and low rate PCP finance and but all uh, these different things, right? So you actually snooker yourself when a year of your first year employment, right? Because you're like, oh, I got my first Capital One credit card and I got my 
whatever on f- my my A3 or my fucking Polo GTI or whatever it is, I got that in finance. So you're actually in a position now that, oh, I can't quit my job. Aye, you're tied. Aye. I'm tied into my job. And then that doesn't mean you stop and go, right, okay, what's my plan for all that stuff to end? Oh, but I want an E class now. Mm-hmm. And I want this, and I want to move out with my girlfriend. And you want all those normal working class ambitions. Mm-hmm. Right, so you snooker yourself at that job that you can then. You, I mean, you can leave because I had a car on finance when I mm-hmm. left and that stuff. But I was willing to take the risk. Aye. I don't recommend that to everybody, but no. some people just they, they sell the whole life for something See, it's so like, small. It's like people people are willing to trade safety. Do you know what I mean? Like just feeling like. I'm just a normal, I've made it in society, I've got a job, I've got a car. Like, they tick all these wee boxes in their head and they're like, I'm all right now, I am I can respect myself in that. Whereas, like, some people have that hang in their head where they're like, that's good, but I want... M-. Like, the way I look at it is, right, like, obviously I do this podcast, the videos, whatever, like, that's what I want to do, right? I don't want to just live on earth and have a job and work for 40 years and retire and be old and be like, right, I've got my pension and die. Like... I want to leave a mark, like a mark, like I want something that is different to what anybody else has done before, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just don't know why so many people are only asked about that, you know what I mean? They're just happy to just go to a job and then work there for 30 years, or your pension, got a good pension, and it's just, it's a, I feel like it's a trap that people have been set into, and it's like a culture of silence where we're actually trapped in it that much that you can't actually see outside it almost ah, it's like we actually all live in north korea do you know what i mean aye, aye. what was it you were going to say there mate just that like going about your life and no reflecting and just kind of just Day-to-day. getting on with stuff right that like the like we talk about this a lot as if like the only other option is like financial like gratification but there's also people who would like there's another thing that like maybe if you create art or something, do you know what I mean? Like there is other things. It's just no wanting to be that kind of vessel, just Aye. cutting a bit. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. It's no just like for me anyway. Like obviously you do want though to, as you say, like survive and rainy days and all that shit. But like if I was, that's not the pre- that's not the Aye. main thing. Aye. Aye. It's just more like something that is not na- You should you should create your own value, right? Aye. So. What is it you do? You already mentioned it today. What is it you do for work? Uh, oh, I've just left. I'm, I was a civil engineer, but I did right. work on building houses and that for right. a while. So let's let's say as a civil engineer, I don't. I'm pure out of date with salaries now. Let's say you got thirty grand a year. Let's just say. So if that's less, apologies if that's pure offensive to civil engineers, right? How fucking snide is it that I go right? What's your name, mate? Jimmy Kelly. Yeah, that's your value. Aye, aye, aye. How fucking mm-hmm. snide? Now, that doesn't mean that you need to be bothered about the number, whatever, like you say about the fucking art and all that, Aye. right? But no, that I fucking your, could create how is your, like that. How is your value determined? But here, you're, this is Aye, your, this is, this is your thing. So who, <laughs> so who am I to tell you that your value has to be attached to this number? Mm-hmm. Now, let's say that you both end up not really making much money off your podcast, and I hope you do, because I think you have cornered a pure different thing with your podcast, and I love mm-hmm. it, right? I'm a, a viewer, a listener, I love it, right? Mm-hmm. But... Let's say you didn't make that much money off it, right? But it, it gave you enough to get out of employment. You'd be so much happier with your life, aye, aye. right? That, You'd aye. still probably want more, right? Aye. And you'd probably be like, oh, what could we have done better, done better to, to make this bigger and all that stuff, right? But your value's no longer been stapled on you by someone aye. else. You've created your own value. Aye, aye, is that, it's like that ceiling has then been lifted aye, off and mate. like you you determine your own sort of thing. I tell of... Richard about the, the way they pay for you if you're a teacher in Vietnam. Like that, so, that is that. Like. So like, so like, what happens in Vietnam is right. So when you go to Vietnam to like teach and shit, so you they'll give you a demo class, right? Which is basically right. They you need to teach a class for half an hour, right? And they just sit and watch it up the back, just like that, watching you. And then, however well you do in that one class, is how much they offer you at an hour. If you know what I mean, so they're like, hmm. <laughs> it's like very good. There's like a high one, then it goes down. They're like, hmm, it's like a six out of ten. You get fucking. Seventeen dollars so an hour. That's what you, what you just did there, but like, aye, but like, and it's basically half an hour. <laughs> that's the main culture difference I've seen in Vietnam. Whereas, like, it's that met- happens here, right? But no face to face where you're like, mm-hmm. you're worth this much. It's like, um, we've looked at the budgets and like, oh, this is the standard thing that you get for this. But like in Vietnam, it's like, hmm, you were quite shit there. You were going to offer you a low salary, but they just wouldn't. It's very like 
behind your back here. It could be mean. better to work, like to live in a mad meritocratic society, but it's just like if that's what you do, then that's what you get. Because it doesn't work out like that a lot. Mm. You know what it's like, fucking. There's people that work in like Subway that have got a harder job than I've done in the past Mate, few years. McDonald's don't I mean? like, is the hardest in, job I've ever done, and I've done a real hum for a bit big fucking. Me- McDonald's, see, you just mentally and just like, and you've got to remember, right, the people that pass through a McDonald's, right? See, when you're passing through a McDonald's, it's different for me because I've worked there now, but the last thing you're really thinking about that much is like, how's this person's day getting on? You're like, I can't wait to get this fucking Big Mac. You know what I mean? So Aye. like, people are very dismissive and you start to feel quite dehumanised because like, people are just sort of interacting with you as I feel, I do go, mate, cheers. Because it's through a, a uh, windy and then an all windy and uh, all that. It's I like try, a pure... mate, I go out my way to be as nice as possible Aye. in drive throughs right? To the point now that I prefer, I think Burger King's vegan options are better than McDonald's. Even though right. McDonald's brought the McPlant now and it is pretty good, right? But there's uh, the, the Burger King at the Key, Mm-hmm. In the aye, south aye. side, right? Like I go there and I pulled up one day and I was in the I eight mm-hmm. at the time, right? And it was like bright gold, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting in the I eight and the guy goes, Oh mate, I've seen your videos and all that. And mate, there was nobody behind me and I took a solid five minutes to talk to this guy, aye. right? And took a genuine interest in what he was talking aye. about and all that. And you know, sometimes now I go to that building, I would say four times a week probably, mm-hmm. right? And I'll go through and I, I because I've got to know him now, I can see differences in him and I can see him kind of go, how's your day today? And you can kind of see the oh, well, you, you actually see his posture change on how good these days and stuff like that. And I'll go, so what's been happening, bro? What's been happening? And then I'll go, do you know what? I'll park up, you bring my food out. Aye. Like, where's him? You bring my food out. And I'll sit and talk to the boy. Mm-hmm. And it's that, and now, if I ask for 10 nuggets, I get 15. Aye. And if I ask for... But that's no way you're Fast for a Rebel Whopper, yeah. he'll give me a Mate, Double Whopper. Uh, Shit, imagine like, that was why you are doing just it. Just <laughs> you are <laughs> great scumbag, right? But that's how I do. But I, 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 when, when you're dealing with people like that, that's something I hate. And that's why one of the things, and maybe not to them, maybe they won't think it themselves, right? But one of the greatest things you can give to someone who's um, begging or whatever is time. Aye. Mm Because everybody... How many pieces are they going to get offered in a day in Glasgow City Mm -hmm. Centre? How many bits of change get flung in? But how many people go, mate... What's, what's been happening? Mm. How are you? Now, I'm no there to fucking be Jesus and save your life. Mm-hmm. I'm no, if, if all you say, ah, pr- fucking prick Davy took five pound off his, fuck, uh, Davy sounds like a prick me. Aye. But I just want to give that person a bit of human interaction. Aye, that could, is it, mate. Mate, the, that is the, it. the sound is kind of about me. It was a guy, James, that I used to talk to every time I went to uni. I used to just sit chill with him and have like breakfast with him and that. And yeah. he was actually the, like, the coolest cunt ever. He was just like, he was from Newcastle and he was like, I just fucking can't be here and fuck about and all that. And he was like, just pure brand new and like, Hang, like talking to him like chilling with him for a bit is like <laughs> pure stuck in my memory you know what aye. I mean seeing comparison to like the offence to the troops I was in uni way, but like I don't remember one conversation I had with aye, people, do you know what I mean like, certain people stick out to you but I think it's also like what is what what fries my brain with people is right you meet people right You how many people do you meet right and you're talking to them and you're like they're not even listening to me they're just waiting to talk you know what I mean aye, they're like they're going, they're going, but it's funny mate because especially when you're like being someone who's experiencing homelessness or someone who's begging or whatever the reason is, right? Because cunts are so precious when it comes to it, right? Go up to people and almost give them turns of the money. Do you promise not to spend this on drugs? <laughs> Mate, like, do you know? Do you know what I fucking hated one day, right? And you might think about this. You might think the same as what I hate, but I guarantee your attitude will change right now in this one sentence, right? I was talking to a lassie, and she goes back to me, and I like to do we random acts of kindness so I'm in McDonald's and there's someone behind me I'll pay for their stuff sometimes and whatnot. so mm-hmm. that they go up by the way that guy in that mall has paid for your stuff and they get some free right so this lass he's like I tried to do a random act of kindness today and I bought a homeless guy coffee I gave him it and he said he didn't like coffee and I said who are you to tell that human what they should deserve because uh, you were willing to buy them it because maybe he's a tea guy uh, uh, maybe he's a tea guy and maybe, make him maybe, a bad maybe guy, he doesn't you know? like breakfast tea maybe he likes green tea uh, uh, because how is he not allowed to have a choice just because Aye. he's experiencing something tough in life or she or whoever? Mm-hmm. Because I'll say, so if I feel like, oh, I'm going to buy this person something, I'm going to be like, what do you want? I no, just What like, is it you Aye. actually want? Or here's what I thought about That's getting you, you because... you're implanting your own ideas onto them. Like, and that just defeats the act. Who are they not to have a choice? Aye. Mm-hmm. Beggars, <laughs> beggars can be choosers. Can be, exactly. That is class. That's the <laughs> line of the, they can the podcast. Be, do you know what I mean? Because they're human beings. Like, exactly. Like, beggars can and, be choosers. Like, Hi, that that's thing that's so hard because like when when someone experiencing homelessness or someone with addiction issues or whatever and I mean addiction issues have affected my my circles my family mm-hmm. like my my cousin Abby 
died an overdose when she just turned 30. And this was only two and a half years ago. And I mean, I, I, I grew up around her. I seen her every day. But to everybody else, and I know if my mum's watching this, it, it would upset her because my mum adored Abby more mm. than anybody else. More than Aye. Abby's own mother did, right? And But walking down the street, if I was walking, I was like, that's Abby. That's that's my big cousin. That I love mm. her. But to everyone else, that uh, are junkie. That's Aye. horrible, that, isn't it? Like, like, who... That person has a story. That person had a life. Aye. That that person had so much value. That person had a child. Mm. That person brought so much more to the table than just that. So who are you to dehumanise that person to that level that they are just a junkie or a statistic? Mm. Because to me, oh, it was an overdose yeah. death. Like that's that's a number on a sheet. But it wasn't just a number. It was someone I loved and Aye. cared about. That might be like that might be today where like the system that's like the new as well. Like that's rubbing off on people who are like. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Like it's the same way like when it's like. See, like a couple of years ago, every program in the telly was like benefit cheats, this and that. And Aye, it was all like, about tax for that. Aye, mate, it's bother. fucking horrible. And that's Machine. just that's projective. Shit like that. And like, do you know what's me- do you know what's mental? And it's like I feel like society is changing towards that though, because like I done um like a community development degree at Glasgow Uni, right? Don't know why I took Glasgow Uni and that, but um, <laughs> I, so <laughs> I, I got, got a Glasgow no, Uni. No, <laughs> I, 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 done, I done my community. Do you know? I was just so sick of just all this money, and I just <laughs> thought, how could I deal with the poor people? <laughs> yeah. So, but they're they're like that course really taught me about like what you're saying. Oh, I you're not even meant to say junkie now. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like That's the derogatory I, term now. Do, do you like, see how I said right, and I make a conscious choice of saying it. I didn't say when you talk to homeless people. Aye. I said when you talk to someone, someone experiencing, experiencing homelessness. Aye, that is, it's that as well. Like, ho- aye, it's like we're trying to move away from just l- putting a label on these people. That's all they are: homeless person, junkie. It's like podcaster. these are human beings with a life. Aye, aye podcaster. <laughs> stop calling me that. Um, but I, it's it's mental. But see, so just back on on to yourself, Richard. Aye. Um, <laughs> Obviously, good deep there, eh? Uh, I feel yeah. great on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but see, just when you started sort of getting into property and stuff like that, um, obviously, you're. I think it'd be good. Could you explain exactly what it is you do with property the now, mm-hmm. just roughly, just so people so, have an idea? If, if I gave you like a one minute overview, right? The business is multifaceted, so it doesn't just do one thing. Aye. So. The end users are investors, right? So they'll have different needs as individuals. One person might want the physical assets and want to have their own buy-to-let portfolio, Mm. and we can build that portfolio for them. We can give them access to opportunities should they want to build it themselves. We can kind of have any degree, give them any degree of autonomy they want, whether it's nothing, manage everything for me, or they're just like, oh no, I want to do this stuff myself, I just can't get access to the deals, mm-hmm. right? So we have that. We have people who are looking for access to deals, but for different exits, so it's not a buy-to-let purpose, it might be they want to flip it, they might want to develop a bit of land, they might want to change the use class of a property from commercial to residential, whatever it may be, right? And then you have liquid cash investors, so people that go, hey look, I'm not really interested in owning the assets, I've got 100k, what can you pay me per year? And we get autonomy of that capital to go and use that on our own projects. And then you get joint venture funding partners. Mm-hmm. So they maybe take stuff that's got a slightly higher risk profile mm-hmm. um, or take something that is just a little bit different, a little bit yeah, odd. Example of but like they that. get so let's say let's say I said to you, right, look, I've got a house because everyone knows a house, right? Mm-hmm. And they know you can pay a bit to a house and sell it and make money. So if I said to you, Jamie, I know you've got £100,000 there. I've got a project here that is this out. There we go. We've got all this, right? Okay, so I, <laughs> when I see my solicitor when I get back from Vegas, I'm going to be like, can we use that? I'm going to be house while I'm there. I'm going to be like, can we use that? Can we use that? Do you know what I mean? Um, so let's say I say to you, look, we've got this house here mm-hmm. and I would like, to, it's going to take us six months to complete this project. Now, right. this isn't strict how I do it. I take money over longer periods of time, three, four, five years, right? But let's say it was on a project to project basis. I said, look, Jimmy, this house, we're going to add this value to it next door sold for this we've got all this data all this due diligence we've done to mitigate our risk profile as much as possible and that's why for your 100k i'm willing to pay you seven percent mm-hmm. seven grand right mm-hmm. which is much higher than you would get on your normal investment products right. right and you go oh that sounds like a good deal now let's say i came forward to you and said and you're just a normal guy you're not probably guy <laughs> let's say i came forward to you and said jay look at that big barren piece of land can you imagine the four family homes we're going to put in that you might start going building the house and I mean how does that look because how do we get the planning and uh, I can't imagine that because uh, like because 
Hoose, add value, sell, makes sense. Aye. Right? Aye. But, oh, you're going to build up the land and all that. I can't pay you 7% for that. Because you're like, but what about this? And what about that? And mm. there is no next door to compare the price <laughs> aye, with. Aye, Do you aye. get what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's when you go to a JV funding partner and it might be, like, I've got JV funding partners. It's like, right, okay. Um, they can almost set their price sometimes. Aye. You lose the negotiation sometimes. It's like, right, okay. Um, yeah, I want a, I want a 40, 60 profit split. You take 60%. I want 40% of the profit of the whole transaction. So, if you're talking about something that's worth 400 grand, like, if I could get the, say it's going to cost me 300 grand and the profit's going to be 400 grand, if I can borrow that 300 grand on 10% and give somebody 30 grand, my profit's 370. Aye. If someone wants 40% of that, my profit goes Aye. down Aye. a lot. Aye. But if that's the risk profile of the deal and I need someone to do the deal, that's just what you what you need to do. So that that is really Roughly. what our business does. So you've been successful in that, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I wanted to ask you, what do you think, in a business sense, your biggest flaw is? Um, good question. And I know I know I have a lot, Aye. and I'm full of confidence. In that, I don't know, that, right? But I, I I will sit down and look at one for us. Um, the, the biggest one for me, previously, was that I I wasn't a good leader, right? right? In terms of presence. So leaders lead from the front. They say, I don't believe in bad teams, I believe in bad leaders, right? Yeah. It's a concept, it's called extreme ownership, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. That I believe in. So, like, same way football falls, if, if a team starts playing bad, they don't start sacking players, they sack a manager, do you get what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's one of those things. And I think I enjoyed the autonomy of my own life so much that I wasn't a present leader all the time. Right. Because I could go on holiday, and I could do this, Aye. and I could do that. And it's not a question of whether you deserve it or not, but... And I, I maybe wasn't supporting my team as much as I, I needed to. Um, I think I went through a, a small phase of counting out opportunities too fast. So because I was getting a good flow of people coming in, I'd be like asking someone onboarding questions before a meeting. And if the onboarding questions didn't meet exactly what I was looking for, I wouldn't meet them, right? But now I'm like, okay, I can see bits and pieces there. How do I change that person from maybe no to my next client? Aye. And I started getting more business that way. Um so so yeah, I think I think I maybe got a bit too picky and choosy for a while. Aye. Um I think now, um I mean we we under promise and over deliver. That's what we do. I don't like to over promise stuff. So that's a that's a good thing. Mm. But word spreads fast as well. So let's say you came to me and you were looking for X and I got you X but even better and you tell your mate, well, your mate's not coming looking for X anymore. Your mate's like, oh, uh, I want one of them. Aye. Oh, I, but I'm like, they don't come around all the time. Well, that's what I want. You get, you get Evan one. Aye. So why can I know what? Do you get what I mean? So, so that can be hard sometimes as well. It's like maybe sometimes I over, over deliver. I'm like, Aye. so just kept on for myself and gave that guy something else <laughs> that just met his criteria bang on. But mate, business is a constant process of evolution mm-hmm. just in terms of even general life is as well. Aye, There's just... always something you can do better and... I'm open to learning for MD. Mm-hmm. Like, if you sat here and you went, by the way, I've heard about this thing in property and I hadn't heard about it, I wouldn't go, ah, I'm shut the property guy, like, shut up. <laughs> like, the same way if I sat down and said to you, oh, I've seen these pod mics before, but my mate uses this one and it's quite cool. Aye. You might take it on board and go, oh, aye, that sounds interesting. You're not going to go, Richard, shut we, up. We like, are the podcast. Do you get what I mean? Aye. So I'm open to learning for MD. Aye. Like, I, I'll learn anything. Like, just because I teach people, it doesn't, I've not completed properly. You Aye. don't complete it. Do you know what I mean? That's probably why you have been successful, because you're open to learning. But uh, obviously, that success has led you to have expendable cash and stuff like that. So I was wondering, right, don't know if you'll know this off the top of your head. Maybe you have a think about it. What do you think's the most, like, obnoxious waste of money thing you've ever bought? I can, t- I can tell you pretty easily. Right, what is it? Right, now... <laughs> Think about it in percentage terms for a second, right? Now, in November of last year, in one calendar month, right, how much do you think, and this doesn't count dinners out, this doesn't count other applications which fulfil the same thing, how much did I spend on delivery? Just the hours. <laughs> on delivery, right? But I mean, I live myself, like, and I eat out breakfast, I mm-hmm. eat out breakfast, I eat out lunch and all that. So I don't have takeaways that much. I eat out all the time because I just don't like cooking. How much do you think I spent on just delivery? In what, a, a year or a month? No, in one month. In one month. 200 pound. Okay. I'll say... Six grand. Uh, no, I'll, so say, uh, I'll say 500. 950 pound. On delivery alone. Ridiculous. On delivery. <laughs> Fucking right? hell, mate. Now, and then include me going out for dinner. And blah, Aye, blah, blah, that's blah. not even just all the food. That's... No, no, that's just delivery. 
That's right. fuck me. Man. I mean, I, have to, I do pay for delivery premium, so I don't pay for How delivery fees, right? You don't pay delivery fees. If you oh. pay for it, it's like sixteen pound a month. That's so for the what, hardcore so delivery, it's worth it for me, right? So that that <laughs> is that is ridiculous, right? <laughs> right? So now it's no the most expensive cunts are thinking I'm going to sit and go, oh, one well, night I pit. 20 grand on black and then like, <laughs> do you get what I mean Aye. but when you think about how hard is it to spend that dough on delivery I was thinking like how would it, I, don't, I don't think you've done caviar on that on delivery did you well I'm <laughs> vegan so I wouldn't eat it anyway oh, but, <laughs> but so, so like it's even harder with vegan know, options no, is you? falafel wraps how many falafel wraps is that I mean, that, you know what I mean? That is, that is so that, that's mental. mad stuff like that right now let me think of any other pointless waste of money some some funny ones See, that was my next question. What's your worst investment? And you're not allowed to say sponsor on right <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing, right? Like, I've wasted a collectively large amount of money on clays and that, right? But it makes me feel, I feel good wearing that stuff. But I can also sit here in my full pre mart trackie mm-hmm. and feel good because it doesn't dictate my value. Do mm-hmm. you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, do you know how hard that is? Unless you go to Sanctuary, but that's for Whoppers, right? Mm. So, I do you know can, how hard it is <laughs> to spend like three, four grand on a night out in Glasgow? Mm. Do you know how hard that is? Uh, I, wouldn't even get a, I wouldn't even get a bass. Because <laughs> it's difficult. Champers, it's difficult. champers in it. Stupid. Sh- Aye, but like, mate, see when, like, see when I get mad with it, mate, I just start doing stupid shit. Mm-hmm. So like, me and Antonio are in News Cafe in Marbella, right? It's a Thursday night. There is nobody there. I'm steaming. I mean, way, way, way gone. And I walk up to the front door and we know the guy, Miguel, that runs it, right? Just three years of being degenerates in there. Mm. And I walk up to him and I'm like, it's all minimum spend in there. Aye. So if you want this table, it's 500 euros minimum spend. You want that? It's a thousand, blah, 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 blah. News Cafe's empty, mate. I walk in and go, what's the dearest table I can get? It's the dearest one I can get, right? And they're like, it's like two and a half grand minimum spend. He's writing a new, right? writing a new Mate, place in the uh, So I've got, I've got one of the Platinum American Express cards, uh, right? So it's like the highest one you can get before the Centurion, which you need to be invited to apply for, right? So it's no got a preset spending limit, right? So near, most things are going to get approved, mm-hmm. right? I don't know this lassie for Adam. I pull out my Amex card and go, take that, <laughs> take that. But I'm just steaming, right? Aye. And she takes it. She takes us upstairs to this bit, right? We sit down and you, your two and a half grand is, is what you, you've you got that to spend, right? Now, Tony just sleeps when he's mad with it, right? So Tony's asleep. That's right. And the two and a half grand table. And Am's just sitting, steaming. Like, the, the table was so dear, right? We had our own bouncer at the start. Oh, mate. We had our own toilet, everything, right? Fuck. So Tony's sitting there sleeping, right? And well, my bay is dear, right? So I've goes like that. I've went like that to the lassie that's serving us, like her own wee life. There's nab- I'm talking nabody. And I goes, get me a Magnum, a Perrier Jouy, right? 700 euro for this bottle, right? So it's however much in a Magnum, 1.5 litres or whatever, right? She brings up this Magnum and I just empty it on Tony. I just <laughs> hold it at him and I just shake it on his head. Right? Fuck. I just shake it on his head. And he just sits up and he's like, what the fuck, right? So then he gets one and I'm kind of Falling about and he's <laughs> squishing on me. We didn't drink a single thing. Oh my god! Right, man. then you wake up the next day and you go, "Oh my god, why did I do that?" Right, and I'm in a position now where it's not going to affect me hugely, Aye. and it's it's not like I go out all the time. Pure, <laughs> so, like, I've had That's ridiculous a, a nights out. I've, I've done funny stuff like that. Like see Joe Corey, Aye. the DJ. Aye. Right, mm. we had like a, a table at Sisu Beach, uh, Sisu Beach Club in Marbella. Right, it was burnt down now. Right, mm-hmm. and this big, like it's like a a platform above the swimming pool the DJ's like inside your booth right and we were pounding him Joe play sorry like every two <laughs> minutes right and we're getting like you can buy you can buy what they were calling spray champagne so basically <laughs> buying bottles of cava and they give you the gun so Aye. we bought like 100 uh. bottles of it right like 100 <laughs> bottles of stuff right and we're like just sitting squishing them oh like, my god just mate just squishing right like guys that are sitting with their families you know, just emptying them out in their way you know, just being pure <laughs> delinquents right so that stuff just happens sometimes and it's hilarious and Aye. everybody's good sports about it and all that and Joe Corey would recognise me if he see me really? right? he would be like I that, hate that, that guy wank a wank right? <laughs> but Stuff like that. Good just, thing you've not got like a noticeable like car or it like that. I know, right? I just yeah. keep it low key. Mate. I'm a humble <laughs> you keep guy. yourself yourself. Exactly. <laughs> but mate, there's like I could I could account for at least two hundred grand of wastage mm. in the last four years. Fuck like at man. least well, and depends on what you say is wastage, right? So 
I Rolexes maybe don't really lose too much value and like it's no wastage because I still have the clays and I can excess. still wear them uh, and all that. Excess. Like I mean, I bought my i8 outright. I just bought I bought that car in cash. Fuck's sake, man. It's like stupid. Like like my GTS is financed Aye. because I'm like the, the rate I got offered was so low and so that and people are gonna go, oh my god, Richard Nixon can't even afford to buy a fucking car. <laughs> Shut up! Right? <laughs> yeah, he can. Like, He's got this fucking I've got money all now. This Skrilla, <laughs> you know, right? So, um, it's a like, lot I bought of that car cash, and I'm just like, when I think about stuff like that, I'm like, I'm buying a car at Disney. I appreciate value. Why would I buy it in cash? cash? I literally provide investments to people for that exact reason. I'm not I, following I, my own advice. I, do you get I, what I mean? So, I think the delivery one is just funny because you look at it and go uh, how, I know. Is how, that, how is that even that is possible dumb. that's Aye. like a mad uh, challenge you'd see on youtube or something Aye. we Nic- tried to Nicado, spend a gr- avocado <laughs> and his name is man. Man. we tried to spend a grand on delivery in a Aye. month Aye. <laughs> so so what were you you were saying what is my worst investment i said what's the worst investment you've made and you're not allowed to say sponsor right this guy <laughs> will cut it out See, see sponsorship mate sponsorship's about passion oh yeah baby i Think don't make that. sponsorship for financial return <laughs> i make it because i'm passionate oh right? yeah but, um, and see, to be honest, see the money I spent on the sponsorship with Rise was worth it just for the hilarity of watching <laughs> the clips was just funny, right? But again, that also falls down to, was my offering good enough for the users? Mm. And was my product good enough to retain them? Aye, so that's what was you've I learned leading well enough? To look at it for the other side. Do you get what I mean? Aye. Like, it's, it's ownership of my thing. You get, I paid you guys to do something. Guess what? He's done it. Mm-hmm. He's done Aye. the thing. But how do I make my offering better Aye. to actually retain those people? Aye. Do you get what I mean? Okay. So, um, but you weren't there so allowed my, to say Riley's cash, mate. Worst <laughs> investment, right? So, so my most investment, right? I've never lost money on a property deal. Never lost money on one. And every investor that's ever came forward for me, we have like a kind of, you, we'll pay you your fees back if the transaction doesn't tick the pre Right, agreed right. criteria that we have I've never had to pay anyone back so when it comes to property I right so um, my, my worst investment I've made poor time investments in people but it's no about that use what I hear however I lost money on something right because that's sexy and oh, funny right, right? Room, mate. right? Yeah. exactly there we go so um, crypto futures so uh, d- during lockdown, one of my mates, a really good crypto futures trader, gave me a few good calls. I was trading about crypto futures, so I put a few grand in it, right? And um, that was that was going well, but it gave me false confidence. I'm like, oh, I'm probably, this was fucking easy, you know that? Uh, I just wiped my cell out about uh, three, four times. I've probably done about 10, 15 grand on that. Just like, but it wasn't like, you can almost say it's like a gambling attitude, do you get mm-hmm. what I mean? But I'm not like a huge gambler. I say that when I'm flying to Vegas and I'm like, <laughs> almost like, but I'm not a huge gambler. I know somebody you'll see pure, I don't play football coupons. Uh, right. that's, that's why I could never day what you do, because I just have that. Like, I've yeah, done Forex for a while. So, like, so Forex. We spoke is, about that before. I, years so, ago. I, so, like, Forex is very, like, up and down and up and down. And like as soon as I'm down, I'm like, how can I get that back? I'd Immediately, I you know what I mean? double it's your it. lot size and then go in another <laughs> position. Like it's I just don't have that. Yeah, but I make good money off football games. No, no, pro- <laughs> no problem with money, but I'm I'm good at that. Do you know what I mean? Aye. But I just don't have that mind. My brain and maybe see if I really, really tried, I could maybe learn the fucking patience and the. the but I just don't. I just I'm just like, oh fuck, I've lost money. I need to get it back and double it. <laughs> now imagine those feelings, which I don't often. Of, right mm-hmm. but imagine the pressure when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of pounds of other people's money Aye. Aye, that's ridiculous because i was going to ask you because you know I mean? obviously before you came on i was um, watching a podcast with you on it listening to ones and that and i just I, do you know even like walking about in that like you said you're very confident and i was like he never looks nervous to be on it and i'm nerv- but when 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 do you when do you get nervous do you get nervous when you're holding all that money for people and you're like no you n- never feel nervous no nah. Um, Doing karaoke or something? Nah, I'm lit at karaoke, by the way. See, that that doesn't make me nervous. Now, imagine this. My first ever time meeting an investor to ask them for money, right, was like, be a touch over three years ago now, mm-hmm. maybe bang on three years, roughly. And it was in Bramble, in Gifnock. Right, aye, aye. Right? So I've been at Merns Castle playing golf in the morning. This guy, right? And I'm wearing my, my golf trip, just my golf get up, right? Mm. So I'm probably smarter than I normally would be, uh-huh. right? And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go meet this guy. But I think I'm dead funny. I think everybody's going to find me funny. Okay. So I'm asking this guy for 30 grand, right? Which in comparison to what I have access to now uh-huh. is not uh-huh. a lot of money, right? 
in terms of my investors. Aye. So I've went in and the, we've got the deal lined up and it's going to make me 15 grand and it's exciting for me, right? And I walk in and I've never met this guy before. I've just spoke to him on the phone. And obviously you go in, shake hands, right? I've went like this to the guy. He's happening, mate. My name's Colin Montgomery. <laughs> Thinking I'm pure funny because I'm dressed like a golfer, <laughs> right? And the guy, I'm expecting the guy to go, even if it wasn't that funny. Aye, 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 right, yeah, okay. yeah, aye. Cut me laugh. He goes, he goes, laugh, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That's what he says to me. Exactly. What, he goes, what are you talking about? And I went, my whole world crumbled. I was like, oh my god, oh bro, it's because the, the golf is a joke and that. And he went, right, okay, sit down. And I've sat down. Oh I've just sat god. and. But I've managed to pull it off and yeah, punny. close it. I've never done that. Like, like, that was so embarrassing to me. Aye. And I, but I never had, I learned my lesson, Aye. I never done that again. Now, in terms of actual nerves, fighting. Aye. Fight, Aye. Fighting is, uh, fighting's the, the, the largest amount of nerves I've, I've ever had, right? Mm. And there's no much that makes me nervous now because I've spoken on decent sized stages. Mm. I've, I'm good at speaking. Mm -hmm. I know I'm good at speaking. Um, there's nothing much that really pulls me out my comfort zone, mm -hmm. which is annoying sometimes. Aye. Because I'm like, are you I want to test pushing, myself. I, are you pushing yourself sort of thing? Aye. Exactly. Now, call it delusions of grandeur to whoever, but, but my goal with the Young Entrepreneur Society is to fill the hydro in the next three years. Mm -hmm. That is my goal. Like Grant Cardone does the 10X, uh -huh. um, what you call it, growth con and stuff uh -huh. like that. I want to, to fill the hydro. Uh -huh. Now, why can I not do that? Because off the ball, I've done it. Or whatever the fuck they're called, on the ball, off the ball, well, open goal, goal, open goal. goal. Right, <laughs> fuck those, right. Well. <laughs> right, fuck Tam Kevin, right. Tam Kevin has to fill that. But, but do you get what I mean? I like, know, I get they've you. done it, right? And they're normal guys. Guy? Exactly. That boy, I, I really, I'm not a fan of techno music at all. Mm -hmm. but the boy Fraser, Fraser or whatever, aye, aye, I, don't, aye. I don't know him, right? Aye, but but he done that. Aye. Jerry right? Cinnamon with the. Jerry Cinnamon, right? Again, no, no somebody I know much about, but they've all done that. Right, Aye. so 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 why can I not do it now? If I'm sitting thinking, holy fuck, I've sold out the hydro here, and imagining that feeling, wow, that might be intimidating, mm -hmm. and picking up my, let's see, like picking up my A forty five, I was intimidated, mm -hmm. even though it's like my cheapest nice car that I've had, I was like, oh my god, I'm picking up my my A forty five now. Aye. But even in situations, I've, I always try and command respect, right? Aye. So one of the things, and this, I'll recommend this to whoever's watching, right? If you can't understand what your life can be like, go and taste it, right? Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean save up your money to go and spend one night at a really nice hotel or whatever. You can experience your dream life for free, right? So I had a Citroen Berlingo mm -hmm. and a Skoda Fabia. That, that was my two vehicles, right? And the Fabia was fucked. Had no, it was a parts car that mm -hmm. I'd managed to get a fake MOT on. So <laughs> I had, I had, most of the dash was out, right? Um, the door cards were missing. I had no windy winders. I had pliers to put it down, right? The Berlingo had a fucked fuel tank with sediment in it. So if you're going up a hill, it would choke the car and you'd have to get out and sh imagine shaking the car <laughs> at this side of the road. That is so embarrassing, <laughs> right? But I was like, I was like, well, I don't know what it's like to be in a Bentley. I don't know what it's like to be in a mm -hmm. Rolls Royce. I don't know what, it, what it's like. So I drove my Skoda Fabia to Bentley, Glasgow in Hamilton, right? Parked it around the corner at the side of Doogie Parks, walked down in shorts, whatever, like jumper and that, and I walked in. And I know young guys that have done this and they go in and try and dress smart because like, what does a Bentley driver look like? And they go, <laughs> hi, excuse me. I'm, I'm wondering if I could please ha have a look at a, a Continental, right? <laughs> I strutted right into Bentley. The Bentega just, the Bentega Mulliner spec had just came out, right? And I walked up to it in the middle of the showroom and tried the door and it was locked. And I turned around and went, mate, why is this locked? Mm -hmm. Aye. Oh, oh two, uh, two seconds, mate, let me Aye. grab a key. It's and he went and opened attitude. it. And then, then he comes and goes, what is it you do? And I just went, tech. He went, yeah. oh, cool. I said, can you open the car? He opened the car and I just sat in it and shut the door. <laughs> right, now, I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, I right? And when he walked away, <laughs> mate, this is what I've done, right? When he walked away, see this, this is not vegan of me, right? But see the smell of new <laughs> leather? <laughs> mate, he's walked away and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Smelling the oh, steering wheel, right? It, Smelling the steering wheel. And I've got out and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll make my mind up. I'm going to Grange Rolls Royce tomorrow, but if I like it, I'll be in touch. And I left. Now, I bet that guy's seen me about now and go, wow, I me wank back then. <laughs> do you know what I mean, right? But that's what I've done. And then every day for me, even sitting in my Skoda Fabia, I did take a wee setting to kind of go, touch the steering wheel again Aye. and think about, wow, what did that Bentley Diamond Stitch feel like? Aye. Yeah, I'm touching my Skoda Fabia steering wheel, but I know 
what my dream life it's more feels tangible like again. Now. Aye, aye. I know what it feels like and I would go up and view the massive houses in Pollock Shields mm -hmm. that I used to have to walk past on my way to school mm -hmm. and I would go and view one and they'd be like my god are you look at this for you and I'd be like instead of going oh well I because I, I actually did really good and I'd, <laughs> I'd be like well what jank I'm here for like aye. Why, why is, why is it no use selling the house so who am like obviously I'm here to look at it for me aye. do you get what I mean I'd command that, that respect attitude, so there's no much that makes me Feel nervous, nervous, mate. What honestly. about like, say for example, right? Say pff, you were somewhere like Dubai, right? And you were in an airport, right? And like a guy thought you were maybe gay, and then. Um, oh, you're telling me as I was like, how is he telling me a story about myself? I was like, what the fuck, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, did you see my face start to go? And I was like, I was like, because I was thinking, I go, mate, I've got a story like that. Do you know what I mean? Actually, and then you're like, right. oh, right, right. Well, tell this story, mate. So, so for those that don't know this story, right? By the way, I got this off Callum. I know Callum. So. Right, so the Callum tell yeah, you that, yeah. right? So, I, I land in Dubai, right? <laughs> and obviously, if you know Dubai, it's illegal to be gay, transgender, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, right? So, I come off my flight, I've got my, my suitcase, and I've got some alcohol for duty free in Glasgow. So they always want to check your alcohol straight away because they're stringent about that in the country now, mm -hmm. right? And the guy's just looking at me. He's like, it's because I had a nose ring, right? But mm -hmm. I'm not thinking anything of it. I got a nose ring because my fucking pop punk princess is not <laughs> for any other reason, right? Mr. Avril Lavigne. And he goes like this to me, pinches it. He goes, why do you have this? And I'm like, <laughs> and I goes, what are you talking about? And he says, in this country, this is for women. And I said, okay, my passport is from Great Britain, mm -hmm. not Dubai. It's just what I do. Like Aye. I just have this. And he says, "Are you a homosexual?" And I just went, "Like no, like Aye. what are you talking about, right?" So I was with a boy, one of my mates, right, and I've turned around. I've went, "Fuck sake, mate! Imagine that!" And he's like, "Did you just swear?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh fuck!" And I went, "Yeah." And I'll tell you a funny airport story in a minute, right? And I've went, "Well, yeah, I didn't just swear, but I wasn't swearing at you. I was swearing to my mate." And he said, I need to search a bag for homosexual propaganda. Oh my God. Propaganda. <laughs> right, what did he do? He, uh, and you know, it's like the tables at the side of the walkway and Aye. they just open your bag. He opens my bag, mate, empties it on the flare, doesn't he look through anything, has it in my suitcase and goes, search concluded. Finds a flashlight. Flesh Sorted. <laughs> uh, mate, mine's a travel one. You can put a wee hang on it and it like packs it. So I, I've, just, I've just went like... So this this but, smells fresh. But now yeah. I can't see it into him because I'm just gonna get chucked to the country as much as I want to. But the the even male now this is a time I was nervous, right? 2017, going over to train at Alliance Training Centre in San Diego, right? I used to go over there and train a bit with the guys make a home of Dominic Cruz, mm -hmm. right? If he's no MMA, right? She's my favourite fighter, that's why I used to go there. It's a cool thing about MMA. You can go and you can go and kick a ball with Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, I you can go and train with, with, with like, your favourite fighters. So I'm in New York airport mm -hmm. in New York Nigeria. connecting, aye, aye, aye. right? And you know, Maca, the gin company. Aye, aye. Right? So Maca had this bottle that had like 40 sides. It was like all these sides aye. on it, right? So now they take your duty free alcohol off you at New York. They put it in, a laser scans it to see if you've got any, like you can basically dissolve gear and stuff aye. and then reformulate it and aye, all that. Oh, Mad fun. shit, aye. right? So this checks it. Now, because of the amount of sides on this bottle, it was making the laser refract and come back as a non-result oh, every yeah. time, right? So I'm like, what the fuck? And they're kind of looking at me. And they're like, can, can we speak to you when you speak to you? Mate, I got a full strip search. I got Searching. a finger up the hoop, <laughs> right? God. Off like a big mama's house with oh, a woman, right? And I kind, of, I kind of felt like, what's worse is, did I say I want a guy? Do you get what I mean? Like, nah, it's I, like, how do you how do you do that? That guy from Dubai, but like, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, you, you just start thinking, what, what if I've got something? What if there's something in this bottle? What, you start thinking, like, you're going to be Aye. fucked, basically, do you know what I mean? But that was, like, a nerve or another airport story. But I, like, there's no situations that have made me nervous. Aye. Even when people come up to me and, like, try and, like, have a bam up with me because they've seen me online or whatever, I'm just like, I think that, I cool. Think, I, think, I think maybe, see... So you just been able to see that martial arts at a young age and that, so you just knowing physically that you can defend yourself, I think that, that does set a, a big bit of confidence in people. Oh, of course. But also, every, like, the most confident people when it comes to fighting are the cunts who can't fight. Like, there's, I a, crazy, think they can. there's a crazy stat, like, the average human man believes they're 8,000% more effective in a combat situation <laughs> I, than they actually I, are. Aye, aye. Right? Like, see the amount of people that, I don't really get into fights outside, but if I 
have to defend myself. Like I will, you just it's just what you do, right? And the amount of people I've neutralised like the, the simplest things. So they run at you and you just foot sweep them, you just hold them down, you're like, calm down. Aye. And it's it's one we tell Aye, they, they realise like, they're no in control. And then they, they look and they go, fuck. Aye. Like I'm no I can't do it in here. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I it's also it's being able to fight, it's uh-huh. like I, I, nerves just only sort of my experience, no. mate. Oh, well, there you go. Wish I was like that. There probably is maybe some things that you've not done that you would get nervous about, but people always say, I did right. something, but right. people always say to me, like, do you know getting like nervous about these lights in the camera and having to just talk and do this thing? And so hundreds of people are watching it and that. And it's like, for me, that's no, doesn't make me nervous. But if I had to step into like an octagon and fight or something, then I'd be shitting myself, you know what I mean? Do you think, what's your. What's your average viewership on a podcast? How many thousand in the first week or whatever? We, or I would, listened I would or... say on average, if we had to average it, I'd say eight, eight. But no, but then you're adding listens as well. Well, So let, let's just say 8,000 people aye. watch that and have a Do you think that would change for those 8,000 people sitting in front of you just aye. now? Would you start aye. twitching? Aye. Right? And do you know why that is? Putting a face it's to It's immediate you. judgment, no, 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 isn't no, no, it? No, no, uh-huh. no, I'll tell you, I'll, we'll take it back to primal times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, do, do you know what I mean when I say a kangaroo court? Um, I've heard about it. So a kangaroo court is basically, you do something bad and instead of got a real court, me and Jamie decide oh, right, yeah, yeah. what your punishment oh. is or whatever, right? So when we were tribesmen, right? Now let's say that your family were entitled to X amount of this and you took extra. But what they would do is they would sit all the elders of the tribe and all the people and just make you stand up in front and explain yourself. Aye. So when you go to do your solo talk in school and you're standing at the front shaking like, fuck, like, oh, you're trying to do it. It's because millions of years ago, Aye. that was only ever used for judgment Aye. and Aye. being, so being you, prosecuted. So we automatically think we're being judged like, Aye. immediately Aye. if we're in a crowd of people. Exactly. You do feel like that, don't you? You do. I, I, I don't I, feel like there's a size audience that I'd be scared to speak to. No. I don't like, the thing maybe is, when I'm talking about the hydro and all that, right. maybe if well, I'm not saying if I do that, I will either do it because I've done the right things to get there or I will only do it because I, I think I think a room of twenty people intentionally staring at you would be more nerve wracking than a th- like I, thousands because they, they almost become not like non fit if you can get that mental block out, it's like can you really even see anybody probably? Aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye, when you have that many people there, like if you have like even a hundred people. Aye. In a packed space, mm-hmm. if you just look above their heads, they're always going to think you're looking at somebody. Even though you're not making eye contact with anybody, True. you're always going to you're looking at someone. And I'm talking here, and I'm looking at the top of your head, and I'm looking at the top Aye. of your head, and it just doesn't look that weird if you're in a compact space. Aye. But, uh, mate, I, I'll meet people in one to one groups. Like, yeah, I, I'll, think I'll, I'll, I think a solo probably. talk's probably one of the most nerve wracking things ever, like, even the new, more than like, mate, I sh- I stadium I shit. I smashed my solo talk, <laughs> and I didn't prepare for it at all. And do you want to hear what I'd done it on, right? It's in first year. Right, and I didn't like my English teacher because I just thought he's a prick, right? And I was quite into like, watching extreme sports. I made like the extreme sports type 419 aye. or whatever aye, it was aye, on Sky, aye, right? aye, aye. So I used to watch it all the time. And I'm sitting thinking, I'm not going to get picked for my solo talk today because there were then three at the start of every class for that week. So I'm like, I'll be somewhere around it. My, my English teacher just goes, Richard. And I'm like, fuck. I get up and give a full solo talk on the X Games career of Sean White. Really, aye? Class. Aye. So I just get up and I go, you know, Sean White is one of the most successful fucking snowboards. He actually is multidisciplined and has competed in <laughs> this and that and this and that. And it was standard grades, obviously. So yeah. I was like, I got like a one for it or something. Aye, aye. And I just sat down and I was like, I'm just a boss but at this solo <laughs> talk. I find it easy, aye. mate. But I find like, like you're, it's the, it's, it's not what you're saying, it's the why you're saying it. Because like, do you know now the wrestler, um, the macho man, Randy Savage, aye, aye. you know what I'm talking about? I no, never watch right. wrestling. He's like, oh yeah. Like, but see, see the thing <laughs> is, right? <laughs> that's exactly what he, that's all I used to do, mate. <laughs> so it was really, I, uh, but he used to like say all these mad things and like, see if you actually listen to it word for word, none of it made I any it sense. Right, but right, the way right. he's saying it, you're like, Fuck it. No, no, the ultimate warrior. Yes. Aye, right. So, like, him, like, he'd be like, and I'm going to the fucking moon, and like, all this shit. And you're like, Aye. but see, when you watch it, you're like, fuck out, we will go to the moon. But, like, Aye. really, none of it made any sense. It's but it's just the way you present charisma, yourself. Charisma, isn't it? But anyway, we, we, we've done a good while, haven't we? Two hours, two hours. But I, I'm mad in it. But <laughs> I wanted to end it, right? Flies when you have well, a oh, it certainly Joseph does. not have a question. Did you tip or something you were wanting? No, that was... Stop tip, that's a joke. <laughs> 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 that was a joke. That was a joke. No, but um, we... 
I've got some. So I'm just a joke. <laughs> I've got some quote, right, fine, famous quotes about money, and I want to get your opinion on what you think of them, right? Okay. So, m- first one: money is the root of all evil. So that comes from. Um, that's like it, it comes from the Bible. Aye. And it's that's not actually the complete quote. Right. I can't remember what book it. I think it's maybe book Isaiah or something like that, right? And the quote was. Um, the love of money oh, the is the root of, of all evil. Right, right. The, lo- so the root of all evil. So imagine I just said that. What would, then, what would you say? So I, it, it's not because at the end of the day, what you choose to do with money determines whether it's evil Good or not. Or bad. Is there people who do bad stuff to get money? Yes. Is there people who do bad stuff with money? Yes. But it's the same way also there are good Christians, bad Christians, good Muslims, bad Muslims. Mm-hmm. It goes into anything. What you choose to do with a specific volume of anything it's totally down to you and you should be judged as an individual what you do with that money. Um, it's very easy to use those quotes when you don't have any money, uh-huh. but in a time of need, when you require it, you will not be saying money is evil, you'll be asking questions. So for like having like 10 bananas is all right, but if I had 10 bananas and flung them at somebody, it's bad. Ah, uh, you're a wank. <laughs> you're a, yeah, uh, a banana wank. A banana wanker. <laughs> yeah. um, next one, more money, more problems. Um, It, it depends. Now, at the sense of yeah, so I drive a car that's more expensive now. So when something breaks on it, it costs more money. <laughs> but if your income is constantly expanding, it's fine, right? I would rather have more money and larger degree of problems. Now, when I first started in property, my problem might have been, oh my God, the person who's try- I'm trying to buy a flat for 50 grand after is wanting 52. Now, it's a two grand problem. But now my income has increased so much. So my, much but my problem might now be, or oh, the guy I'm trying to buy 10 units off of, for this person, mm-hmm. and it's 10 units at an average value of 70 grand each, mm-hmm. actually wants 800 grand now. Right. So it's a 100 grand problem, but I'm dealing with a bigger client, my income right. is bigger. So yeah, more money, more problems, for sure, is a real thing, but it's relative to your situation. But the problems aren't really a big deal because you've got the money. So exactly, I think, aye. exactly. So Most problems can be solved with money. Aye, aye, true, true. So the next one, money makes the world go round. I believe... In terms of science, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I'm not 100% but, sure. No, there is a guy who just, pays just, to get there. Just a, a money that. gun, right? <laughs> um, the, the world as we know it. So, humans existing does not stop without money. But the world, how we know it and how it's structured, has a fiduciary fucking requirement mm-hmm. that there needs to be money involved mm-hmm. for that to continue working because we wouldn't be on the podcast because then you wouldn't be paying your lecky bill and the, do you get what I mean? Aye. aye. So, can, sure. aye, aye. So, um, and then the last, the most probably... I, I the, had one as well the, that I actually read the day and I was what? like, I like a quote about can I money in that and I was like, that would be good to ask actually about. So, uh, William Blake said, the road to excess, the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Do you know what that means? Or do, what the do you think about it? Jamie road. just wants to know what that means, man. <laughs> the road to excess leads to the path. road of excess. So the if road. you date, like, then you'll become enlightened with it. So, like, I was thinking, like, you're, like, got to Vegas, doing all this shit that's, like, mad film shit, literally. Like, has it made you feel more... Uh, has it made you, like, spiritually more, like, enlightened at all? Or has it made you more wise in the sense of, like, this doesn't actually mean anything in a way. Uh, Do you know what I mean? It, it, it has in both senses, uh, right? And what I mean by that is, like, my my value isn't attached to doing that stuff. So, yeah, it doesn't mean anything, but I find it fun. Uh, so, I like doing so it. So, then it does right? mean something, you know what I mean? Uh, but what, what it made me realise is, one, especially when you go to Vegas, you realise how small you're playing, literally, right? Because you're watching guys, the cars, the ha- the size of bets they're placing. Like, you're playing so small, so it puts my idea of success into this small little pigeonhole, like, which then I, makes I, me expand my horizons. But what it also lets me understand is, like, wow, how much, how much power do I have in purely existing? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying how much power do I have as an individual because, oh, I've got this and that. I'm saying, but what if this is what I've been able to do in three and a half, four years, what's the next three and a half, four years? Because, oh yeah, I get to go and sit beside the cage in Vegas on Saturday. I'm going to pull up there in a Lambo. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave a Lambo outside. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to get in my Lambo. I'm going to go to my fucking amazing suite in my hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get to do all that stuff, right? And I, that, that was not it was not by divine intervention. It wasn't, I wasn't given permission to do that. I built it mm-hmm. myself. So 
how much power do I actually have as an individual? Mm -hmm. Like, I can, if that's what I've done in this small period of time, my opportunities and what I can grow to in the next couple of years should be insane. Aye. And it affirms to me that what I'm doing is real. Aye, Do you know I, what get I mean, you, I get I like, like I, I talk it's the talk, feedback. but I fucking live the shit Aye. that I do, mate. Aye. Like, I don't. You're not bullshitting. Nah, Aye. I'm not, mate. And see, at the end of the day, see if I was bullshitting or whatever, I'd have been like, everybody knows where I live. Everybody knows where my office is. My office address is. Oh my fuck! I'd have been fucking battled by now. My motor would have been set in fact something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, the stuff that I teach, the stuff that I talk about, is my everyday, mm -hmm. my existence. I, I live what I what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I that's good, man. But the last one, probably the most famous one, is money makes you more open to gerbling. Do you know what gerbling is? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you? Is that when you uh, put a? It's you say it's where you put a gerbil on a johnny and shove it up it's your arms gerbling also known as gerbil stuffing or gerbil shooting is a sexual practice yep. of yep. inserting small live animals so into always... the human rectum to obtain stimulation so do you think you feel more open to that aye well do you know what's funny right since making money i've got into habit of adopting rescue hamsters oh really and so they have so their you're, own, you're like halfway there they have their <laughs> bedroom in my house and i've got like a hamster emporium in my house so if they're like blind or whatever like i'll rescue them and on feed them and all Aye, that right that's nice. so i guess in the sense i'm like a million percent closer to gerbling because i didn't <laughs> i didn't have any hamsters before there you go and now i do so so uh, that's probably the only one in that list that was actually... It's actually, actually it was a, a famous quote by William Blake, and what it was was, the road <laughs> to <laughs> Gerbilin lies in the Do. palace of making dosh to buy <laughs> the hamsters. That <laughs> amazing quote, mate. Yep. And that, we could probably end it in that quote, mate. Beautiful. Yep. It's been beautiful, mate. We've went very long, but it's been very good, mate. Very interesting. I have and enjoyed I know, this, mate. And I know you were saying, right, because you probably came on this and you were like, right, ah, uh, like... Done. Probably you probably never expected to get asked this much about all this stuff, eh? Nah, nah. I thought we were going to talk about like the spinnies and buckets. <laughs> but, <laughs> the main, like, but the reason, <laughs> mate, the reason, right, that I wanted to do this with you is because I want your proof, right, that anybody listening to this can go and make your life for themselves, right? So it's beyond my life. Aye, right? exactly. So as much as this podcast is a laugh, people come on and people get people get things for having a laugh in this podcast, right? Like. Like we've been saying this whole podcast, once you see somebody and you hear about where they came from to where they are now and that, it makes it tangible. Just like you're more with the, the plane, you fucking with the Bentley. Going in into it makes things tangible. So I wanted to get that value out of you, but it's been a fucking pleasure, mate. You've been you've been superb, man. Mate, see, at the end of the day, right? There's people that watch this who really like me. There's people that watch this who maybe don't really like me, right? But forget about the person that's saying it. Make me faceless and pretend I don't exist, right? Because there's, and I mean, any quote I use, I've stole off somebody else probably, right? But there's a lot of value in what I'm saying in terms of your own capabilities and possibilities for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, forget that it's me that's saying it. If you have a personal affront that you don't mm -hmm. like me, right? Just think about what's possible in your life. Like, our chances of existing in general is so slim. You need to get back to a biological level, Aye. it's so slim, right? So why should you know live something that's great? Mm -hmm. Because the the good is the enemy of the great. The great is the enemy of the best, mm -hmm. right? And we're all so happy to just exist, but existence is just not enough mm -hmm. as, as a human, as a for me as a man, for me thinking about having a family and all that. Like, I want, call it fucking self-centered, but I want a legacy. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And you might not want to have that. You might want to be a bit more low key or whatever. But create something beautiful with your life, whatever that is to to you. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be that old guy lying in your. That's why I've got the discipline and regret tattoos. Aye. You don't want to sit and lie in your your deathbed and go, "Wow, Aye. I'm so glad I done all that overtime. Aye. I'm so glad I done this or whatever it may be." Because you're gonna sit there and you're gonna have regret. Mm -hmm. Um, everyone's gonna have regret to some degree, but mitigate it as much as possible by creating an existence that you're actually happy with. Aye. So I'd say go out and get it. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be fifty quid directly exactly. to the Young Entrepreneurs Society. <laughs> <laughs> it's forty-seven pound actually. Oh, <laughs>
discount code uh, <laughs> <laughs> Riley's <laughs> guy <laughs> <laughs> no thank you so much mate Troops Cheers, hope sir. you enjoyed that um, as always tell us who you want to see next subscribe like um, send me and Jamie money in fact we don't need money actually I'm going to just take this take that take this one back oh yeah keep it keep it mate that's like a wee money just let you know I had an illustrious combat sports background yeah right cheers Troops see you later fuck money Thank you.